The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. I got a fever, and the only prescription is my over the line! This, I'm sorry, Smokey, you were over the line, this is Paul. Is the cigar authority? Is it true that if you don't use it, you lose it? The authority. Is that a serious question? On everything cigar. No, it wasn't. Yeah. It's like I picked the wrong week to quit smoking. And out of the cigar industry. That was pretty awesome. With your host. You have to use so many cuss words. David Garofalo. Whenever I'm about to do something, I think, would an idiot do that? And if they would, I do not do that thing. Mr. Jonathan. Check out the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. Very stunned. I'll put scotch on the rocks. Any scotch will do, as long as it's not a blend, of course. Uh, you single malt. Blend of lipids, blend fitting, perhaps. Maybe it's blend gout. Any blend. It's time to light them up. Sounds really fun. It's time. Cool. 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 For the Cigar Authority. I gotta have more cowbell. Light them up, light them up, light them up, everybody. Saturday, January 27, 2018. Broadcasting live from the La Flor Dominicana Cigar Soundstage. Today, we are talking to you, the cigar consumer, the cigar customer, um, and something we touch on every year, how you should be acting in a cigar shop. And with us today is the territory manager of Oliva Cigars, Todd Cumes. Welcome, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. And you're listening to the Cigar Authority, broadcasting over eight years, making it the longest continually running cigar podcast, awarded the Ambassadors of Cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine, Awarded the Top 10 Educational Podcast by Podbean four years in a row, The Cigar Authority is the most listened to cigar podcast in the world. Cigar Radio at its finest, The Cigar Authority is a proud member of the United Podcast Network. You catch the podcast on demand at any time or our daily blog on thecigarauthority.com. This is the tough show, the tough love show, the one every year that we do, and we tell you, the consumer, what how you should be acting in the cigar shop. We get more hate mail. On this show, you do. You get the most. I usually get it. You get the hate mail. Because I'm so strong on my opinion when it comes to this. But uh, before we start getting the hate mail and you guys start in the hate, let's show a little love to a guy who has never done a podcast before. Todd Humes. First ever. A little bit of a virgin on this uh, aspect. We'll be gentle. I promise. Yes. It won't hurt much. I appreciate it. And it's not like you're no newcomer to the cigar industry. I have to know you more than 20 years. 20 plus, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, and all the different companies you work for. There's the been a few. There's <laughs> been a few. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, it's 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 been a great industry to work in. I've been blessed for 20 years to uh, to be to meet some lifelong friends, yeah, including nice. yourself. Um, it really has been great. I mean, I started off 20 plus years ago at a local wholesaler selling cigars when the cigar boom was just starting oh, is that to happen. Started? Yeah. Yep, yep, okay. Yep. And then from there, I was fortunate enough to uh, to be approached by several manufacturers and just kind of moved along. Kind of having your own brand during the boom. Mm-hmm. We did. So, I mean, you've been to all aspects of it. You've sure been to have. a lot of cigar shops. Sure have. Sure have. Most uh, mostly up and down the East Coast. Yeah. Um, for a for a short minute, I was. Uh, I was traveling a lot further than just New England, so yeah. I got to got the uh, national the sales, yeah, yeah. right? Yep, yep. For the Villager Company, way yeah. back when, yeah. So you're perfect. You're a perfect guy because you've been in lots of cigar shops. Um, so you see how you you certainly see how the retailer acts uh-huh. because you deal with him direct, but you can't help but seeing the consumer sure. in a cigar shop. Sure. I've seen some funny things over the years. Yeah, so some of them are funny and some of them are not so funny. They're not nice. Well, it's funny in, it's in the aspect that it's like you can't even believe and wrap your head around that people think that this is okay. Yes, acting this way. All right. So maybe it's out of pure ignorance of the consumer and you listen to the show and you didn't realize that this was a faux pas, you know, act like this in a cigar shop. Um, you don't realize it or you're going to do exactly what happens every year is say, I totally disagree. Well, with you're you, going to try to argue. And th- these are the Ten Commandments. These yes. are these are these are written in stone. I should be able to kill somebody. I, I want to be able you to kill can't somebody. do it. You can't kill people. Can you cover thy neighbor's wife or whatever it is? Cover thy Not cover. Cover. <laughs> cover. Cover. Can you do that? If no, you cannot. cannot. If no, they're you swingers, cannot. you can. Yeah, if you no. can. If, if she says it's okay. So we're going to get to that. Um, um, you, But there's no doubt about it. You see them behaving badly. Oh, she certainly <clears> do. <throat> you know, and, and it, a lot of it is, I think, ignorance. They just don't look at it from – and that happens in a lot of walks of life. They just People don't just – 
take a time to step back and say, well, how is this from the other point of view? And you see retailers accepting mm-hmm. that even though they're behaving badly, I obviously have to accept this type of, and, and you don't. Right. No, no. There's definitely there's, there's things that uh, should never go on in this, you know, in a yeah. cigar shop. You should not allow it to end up happening. But you feel funny because this is the guy that comes in all the time mm-hmm. and he spends his money. So it, it's a funny situation. So you, Mr. Retailer, if you're listening to, to this today, just play up. this show on repeat. <laughs> That's it. Just keep playing it just keep <laughs> until the guy stops <laughs> doing what he's doing. No, but giving people. The benefit of the doubt, I, I think the majority of it is ignorance and, oh, my God, I didn't even realize that. But as the owner of the shop, it is so tough to end up going over to the guy. And it's like, oh, my God. Oh, certainly. I have to go up there and end up saying to this guy, listen, let me talk to you and try not to do it in with front him of in front of everybody else. Right. And you pull him aside or something like that. But he's not going to take well to it automatically and then you got a chance of saying him saying screw you i'm, I'm gonna go to the next store i'm gonna go behave badly at that guy's store shop. And, and if that's that then good luck to that store right right so uh right now you are working for oliva how long have you been there i've been with them for uh just a little bit over two years okay yeah. when the changeover happened or right before the before buyout? Before, uh, so that was a little scary. Bu- you finally go with them, and then somebody buys you know, the company. Is that why some of your beard started to turn a little that's white? When it, that's it? exactly when it started turning white. Yeah, um, you know, it was funny because I've, I've, like we've talked about before, I've been with a lot of cigar companies, like seven of them throughout my career, and most of the seven, I always had that very difficult sell with small boutique brands yes. and things like that. Um, so when I was, <laughs> able, was fortunate enough to get the job with Oliva. It was, you know. Oh my, my God! God people ask like, for these right. things. Right. I mean, you want to see me? Like, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> is it was it like being called up to the big league, so to speak? After a very, very long t- time in the minors, yeah, a little bit. I think so. That's a good way to to. Because I think, I mean, I, I've known you now seven, eight years, mm-hmm. and uh, I've always felt like you were very good at what you did, Thanks. and uh, you know, I was always curious. You know, why is he always working for these smaller companies? You know, it, you know, try to give mm-hmm. this guy a break. But it does feel like you've uh, they've recognized that you've certainly got the experience. If he can if he can sell these little unknown brands and go, you know how many times you're kicked in oh, your pants please. and you back up, you show up again <laughs> to walk in and they already actually have it on the shelf mm-hmm. and it's a name one of the biggest names sure. in the cigar industry. Um, a much easier walk. It's in. very exciting. Yeah, it's very exciting <clears throat> to be part of it. So now your job is to get maybe the new. And I look at Gilberto Oliva. We're gonna smoke, light that cigar up now. Um, Gilberto Oliva is the new Oliva cigar. This was actually the first mm-hmm. Oliva cigar we ever sold. Really, twenty years ago. That in a bundle, correct? Or was it, that a was box? A box. was it a box? It was a box. And I remember meeting him at the Big Smoke in Boston. So that's how far ago that That was a long time ago. It's got to be 20 years ago. Sure. Were those the cigars that were in the toilet seat box? Do you remember those? It was. That was was when it became Oliva. Right. And that was, and they say toilet seat box. It it resembled a toilet seat. Toilet seat. It did. So, uh, Barry, tell us about the cigar so we can light something up here. Well, today's first cigar is the Gilberto Oliva Reserver, and it's manufactured in Nicaragua by the Oliva Cigar Company. The size is a 6x50 Toro, and the wrapper is Sumatra, where the binder and filler are Nicaraguan. It's part of the Cigar Authority Care Package, and a single cigar will set you back $6.29, while a box of 20 is just $109.80, which is a savings of $16, or 13%, while off the single price at twoguyscigars.com. <clears throat> he runs out of air at the same spot. Yep. In if you're too <laughs> far away from a brick-and-mortar retailer that carries it, try twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com. You know what you can do is make that sentence shorter. Sure, rewrite yes, it. I'm going to rewrite it. Thing. <laughs> Not run out, of, run out of gas. It's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand. While all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, in excellence. Excellent. Okay. So Sumatra, you said. Mm-hmm. Sumatra, Nicaraguan, made in Nicaragua. Correct, yes, sir. Oliva's entire factory, entire production, Nicaragua. Yes, we own farms in uh, Ecuador and, and in Mexico as well. Sour yep. cream and chive potato chips. <laughs> Cold he's, t- he's tasting it before he lights it. I was thinking of the white sugar stick from the Pixie Sticks. You remember it in the bag? Yeah. Yeah. The red, the just green. Just a stick. Just a stick. Just a stick. Just a stick. Tastes like the white 
sugar stick. That must that that is your Chinese pea pods, by yes, the way. That is. is your go-to that weird is, yes. flavor. It's wrong. And it's more realistic <laughs> than Chinese pea pods. Chinese pea pods, <clears throat> it, it's green, it's a vegetable. We all know what that tastes like. I haven't had a, one of those sticks mm. in so long. Yeah. I can't remember what it is. Did it have a sweet taste to it? Not yeah, really. I feel like I'm 15 like years off, old again. Off sweetness, a little chalky component. All right. All right, we're lighting our cigar today with the Vertigo Intimidator. This is a four-jet lighter that features a color-changing flame, so you don't lose the flame on the golf course or out in the bright sun. And it does have the patented Vertigo big-ass tank, as you can see right here. It holds about uh, a fifth of a can of butane in that bad, Larry. The Vertigo Intimidator retails for $24.99. Unbelievable. What makes it so it turns red like that? And why don't they all do that? Because they turn blue and you're outside in the blue and you can't yes, see I'll it. I'll tell you why they don't all do that. It's a certain kind. You need you need a lighter that has double wall protection. Because you got to hold it down for a while. Well, you're going to keep that thing lit for a little bit in order to get that uh, to glow. But also, uh, it, you don't want anything with a mechanical closure on it. Because if that ever failed and you get used to putting your thumb there, yeah, yes. you've done it. Yes, I have. You've done it. Burn yourself. So you, it's got to be a detachable cap, I think. It also has an element in there that forces it to change color. Okay. It's like that, magnesium or something. It really just burns a different color. Just heats it and changes the color to flame. Because I've seen other ones that have different colors too. Why does it turn blue? Because it's automatically a blue flame. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And it, the magnesium ends up changing it because it would be nicer if it was always red <laughs> as opposed to blue. I, I, it's lost outside. You know, when you're yeah. out, out there, you know. Oh, yeah. And I have burned myself because I, oh, it didn't click. The light didn't click. Oh, yes, it did. You know. <laughs> well, you think the cap's on. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> you maybe not have put the lid end in your mouth, but everybody's burnt their finger oh, on yeah. a jet lighter, right? We've all done it. If not, that means you're not smoking enough. Right. You, sh you should be burning yourself. Right. So uh, did everyone get a chance to see my new video that's been posted on Facebook and everywhere? I did. I did. It's a little uh, It's a little three-minute movie. It is a three-minute movie. <laughs> I hired a professional to film it and edit it for me. For and, what reason? Uh, just my wife and I had decided this year is going to be the year that we finally work together and dance. So we're going on a little mini tour, and this is Save promoting. the marriage. Save the marriage. Yeah, it's a save the marriage tour. <laughs> that's what it is. I'm figuring that's it. So uh, <coughs> yeah, if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's on uh, Mr. Dot Space Jonathan on Facebook. Mr. Jonathan, the way you would expect it to be spelled uh, on Facebook. It's the first video in the news feed okay. if you haven't seen it. It's a good time. I'll take your word for it. You'll like it, Gary. <laughs> you don't have to have Facebook to see it, but it's also on YouTube. Okay, can we get back? Can we go back to cigar smoking? Get back to cigar okay. <laughs> Licorice and almonds. Mm. That's what I'm getting. I got almond. Licorice. Could be black licorice. That's Ed Sullivan saying he nailed it. <laughs> that's me saying he nailed it, too. It's pretty damn good. Six dollars. Good value. Mm. And, that, and that's really the Oliva company is the value from the bundles all the way through that your cigars right. are priced really good. Thank you. Yeah, they, uh, that's one thing the Oliva family and the company really prides themselves on is is putting out a good quality cigar that, you know, appeals to everybody from the bundle smoker all the way up to the super premium with the Milanio and the V. So the V, the interesting thing was, you know, somebody that likes a fuller body cigar and wants something of decent value. When you start getting into full body cigars, it's very hard to find a value sure. in a full body cigar. Consistent. And, correct. That's going to smoke consistent for. And that's the only the only one place you can go. Thank you. Yeah. So. No. They, like I said, they. You know, the, the Oliva family. You know what? The reason why the Oliva family doesn't come out with a lot of new cigars from year to year is because we don't really have to. What we do. They do very well, yeah. and it's very consistent from year to year, box to box. So, you know, chasing that, you know, new customer to keep them in, in interested in the Oliva brand, it's just something that we've never really had to do. Yeah, and we lost Mr. Oliva this year. We did. It was very sad. Yeah. Yeah, Gilbert Oliva. Yes, that's right. right? So, right. yes, to him is right. Yeah. Um, yes, we were actually down in Nicaragua when we uh, – Oh, really? We word, yes. Uh, you know. And is there Oliva still – even though the company was sure. sold, it's still sure. active. Ho yep. So Jose is still um, 
you know, involved as CEO of our company down in Miami Lakes. Um, he is, you know, the, in line to be the next Speaker of the House of Florida. Yes. So his time is going to be spent away doing that for the coming year. So in in preparation of that, they've uh, they've they've given Corey Babbitt, our our oh. national sales manager, okay, a, a new title. So he's taking over some of the responsibilities okay. that that uh, Jose had. Yeah, very interesting. Trying to be. Um, Working for for the government who tries to shut mm -hmm. down tobacco and it's great to have them there. Oh, uh, it's a great ally. Yeah, to have, absolutely. Yes, yes. and and I, you know, I've I've known Jose for a long time and uh, watched him basically grow up and stuff, and I could see that in him, the politician in him. He's very passionate yeah, about it. Absolutely, from way back. So that's great to see. So, all right, so let's get to this. Um, as I say, we've been doing this since I first saw this, and it was. Right about the time when it was the Star close, Authority yeah, started. Yeah, close to the beginning. 2010 and, and there was online the Ten Commandments of the cigar consumer, the commandments of cigars. And looking at it, I said, oh, my God, this guy really gets it. I have no idea who he is. But, wow, this is great. And at that time, tried Googling who he was and no information came up. And it was years later that I figured out, okay, M uh, Miguel Shodell. Shodell? Am I saying it right? Show down. Yep. Um, is a cigar rep. And this guy wrote these Ten Commands of Cigars. So I gave him, I, I don't know if I emailed him or I gave him a call or whatever and say, can I discuss this and bring it on the show and I'll uh, mention that it's you that did it. Um, and he said, yeah, of course, whatever. Take it for what, for what it's worth or whatever. And we played around with it over time, over years, and added things and yeah. took things away and stuff. But let's just go to the core of exactly sure. what this is. So he writes... If you are like most, you have lost the ability to smoke in your house due to a thing called marriage and children. The next best thing is to find a great local brick and mortar store to befriend. Support your local tobacconist. So this guy nails it right off the bat, right? And as always, remember the 10 cigar commandments. So what the heck is that? These rules have been passed on from generation to generation, he says. And... Um, he nailed it, basically. He nailed it of wh what the consumer should do. Now, again, the argument's going to be, yeah, but how about the store owner that tells me I can't do this? Again? We can do a whole show on what the store yeah, should be doing. Yeah, we can do a thing on cigar shops behaving badly, but this is uh, consumers, and we're going to get people's acts straightened out here. That's right. So Miguel actually had the balls to say this and put his name attached to it. And, and I'll tell you, as, as somebody – saying the commandments, what what comes with this is a lot of negativity. It certainly does. Because people get seriously upset because we're breaking up their clubhouse at this point. The treehouse, the fort, whatever you think it is, the fact of the matter is it's somebody's business. Right. That's right. It's no joke. This is this is business. And we want to help spread the word, despite what's about to happen to us as we go. So um, we're giving you the benefit of the doubt, maybe you don't know any better. It's possible. So it's pure ignorance why you act the way you act. And, okay, once you end up hearing it, now it's not ignorance. You actually will be choosing to do the wrong thing. Um, again, retailers are doing the wrong thing. We can do a whole show on that. I, I could do, a, I could do a, a, an entire show weekly about how retailers are, not only in the cigar business, but in every business, right? Everybody, we got Yelp for that. He's a... Uh, I can tell you this, Todd. I, I don't often go to places other than just out to eat with him because he, he eats is, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's he's unrelenting. You walk into a little bodega and he's, well, why don't they put the bread here? Yes. And the so oranges stupid. should go over here. I mean, it's, 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 it's common sense. Yeah. Right. But he's that, way, he's that way at restaurants. He's that way when we go into a department store. Terrible, terrible the way that his brain works. Well, it's like the supermarket. The peanut butter should be in the same aisle as the bread, but it's not. Right. It drives me nuts. Well, yeah. Some people are allergic to peanuts, so not everybody puts peanut butter on bread. But it should be in the same aisle. Why do I have to Well, then the more? chocolate should be in the same aisle as peanut butter because that really is the uh, parent. That's sacrilegious. Okay. Back to the <laughs> peanut butter cup. <laughs> what this comes down to is believe it 
You have to support your local brick and mortar retailer so you have a place to go. You have to support your brick and mortar retailer so that Todd has a place to go because he's mm-hmm. the one that sells to the brick and mortar retailer. That's right. And I happen to be a brick and mortar brick retailer. And mortar, that's right. So, yes, we're all on the same side over here that the Ten Commandments are very, very important. Uh, but before we get to the Ten Commandments, let's get to the ding, ding. It's time for the matchup of the week brought to you by VS. VS means versus, but it stands for Victor Sinclair. Victor Sinclair cigars. Who would win this hypothetical battle? So today's hypothetical battle, which should I go here? I'm going to go to a salesman. Why not? You're a salesman. We'll talk salesman. Michael Tanner. Remember who he is? Uh, Full House? Michelle Tanner. Right. Michelle Tanner. Yeah. Michelle Tanner. Sold a lot of cookies. Oh, yeah. Michelle Tanner. Michelle Tanner from Full House. Okay. Versus Tommy Boy. Ooh, the salesman from Tommy Boy. Yes. Right, that he was able to sell with, it. With or without the small jacket on? With the small jacket. Okay. Because that's fat, 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 fat man in the local. That's right. So Michelle Tanner. Can full yeah. House. You can get a good look at a T-bone steak by yeah. that's right. Yeah. Ass. You know, so you've got to take the butcher's word for it. So both salesmen, but they're selling Girl Scout cookies. In a contest, who sells the most Girl Scout cookies? This is easy. It's Tommy simple. Boy versus Michelle. Tommy. No way. Yes. He eats them, yes. not sells them. Okay. She's he's not going to st- eat them. He's selling them to himself. She's. <laughs> <laughs> is he's that gonna, how it works? He's going to fall through the free. table. The cookies are going to go, go everywhere. everywhere. Yeah, right. And out of guilt and out of like just pure, my God, that poor SOB. She is a girl. She's a girl. girl Scout She's cookies. probably you ever a buy a Girl Scout, Scout cookie from a boy? No, no, no. It wasn't going. I'm on not saying that we I wouldn't, kids. Sean. Don't get your panties in a bunch uh, over there. <laughs> we have to. Go I would. There for. What do you have to go there for? No need. <laughs> he was getting upset. <laughs> right. Yeah, I definitely got to go, with Tommy. I think Tommy's. Tommy Michelle boy? Tanner. <laughs> now I go Michelle Tanner. As a great salesman. You, All right, Tommy. Do you follow salesmen? Do you? Uh, Watch any of those things that help you sell no. better? And no, no, I've been at this for so long. long. You could write your own. Yeah, book. probably could. Yeah, probably could come up with a few, a few suggestions on how to be a better salesperson. The Tommy Boy was a pretty damn good sales. He was. Not he pulled it off in the end. Company. Pulled it off in the end. Pulled it off in the end. Save the company. Right. Yeah, it's it's Michelle Tanner because he realized that. He had to be passionate about the right. sale to get that lady to turn the right. fry later back on for the chicken. That's ones. right. Tells you right there what kind of salesperson he is. So what do you got? Tommy Boy? Michelle Tanner? I hate to agree with Jonathan, but Michelle Tanner. Really? Because she's a girl. Yeah, I was going to walk up to the girl. All right. It's going to be Michelle Tanner. Then the winner of uh, selling. Sorry, Todd. That's all right. What do we do with that information? (laughs) A lot of the information you get here on the Cigar Authority. Totally useless. It's part of our job. (laughs) <laughs> this is what happens you get a little nervous as this is going on let's talk a little about the cigar now that it's lit look at the burn the burn is unbelievable so we're talking very very mm-hmm. aged tobacco perfect burn white ash on it um it's a thin wrapper you know we had the, the Boy, show. it looks shiny and nice yeah and we had the show a few weeks ago about the types of wrappers with weather um a little bit thin you know i don't think you want to smoke the cigar outside when it's 10 degrees uh, but the thin burn line, you can see the oils coming up off the leaf as the burn moves up. This is Sumatra. It's not that thin. It's not like shade-wrapped tobacco. It, it it has a beautiful aroma as well. And and I would say medium tops. Medium. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely not. Uh, yeah. It's yeah, right this on the bottom a, end. Of it's approachable by any smoker. Well, Anybody can which I'll stuff. take you to Oliva V. I'm not a full-body cigar smoker. I can smoke that cigar. Yeah. And it is full-body. <clears throat> It's full flavored, it's full body, but it must be so well aged or whatever's so going well on. Yeah. Whatever's yeah. going on, even from the very get go when that first cigar came out, I'm like, wow, this is strong. And then yeah. next thing I know, I'm nubbing the cigar. It's so. not strong for the sake of being strong. It's got a lot of flavor, it's got a lot of character, mm-hmm. it's got a lot of body to it. This has a lot of character and a lot of body, although not overly powerful strength wise. Now that you mention in uh Aromatic. It's got a lot of aromatic qualities to it. Is is 100% correct. What I love on the retro hell is you don't get that much spice or pepper, but that licorice is a little bit enhanced. Come on, let's go. You, you held it in your mouth like you were ready to I do it. I let a little out. You didn't let none out. You <laughs> let nothing out. This one should be easy for you because there's no spice. Lose it. Can't do it. Can't do it. <laughs> 
I have a hard time with it. Smooth. <laughs> a little bit of cinnamon quality. Mm -hmm. I agree. There's a little yeah. bit of that cinnamon note. Mm, pretty good. Wow. practicing. Yeah. And studying. Show yes. off. He's, he has a hard time with the word cinnamon. So, oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Six dollars. You would expect a, that's a great value. Mm -hmm. so you would yeah. expect coming out of Nicaragua that it would have more presence of uh, that traditional peppery component, but it, the peppery side of it is, is muted. Mm. It's there, but it's an afterthought. It's not in your face. Very well aged. Cedar, cinnamon. Um, You're just gonna go around the whole flavor wheel there. Little, little dry rub type of spice, but muted. It's there. It's not in the back of the throat type of thing. It's no, it's not a very, it's not a throaty cigar yeah. at all. It's a, yeah, it's, it's like Jonathan said. Depends it's on solid. how far you put it. I would like, yeah, yeah, it. yeah. It goes through, going like one of the tongue lozenges. Of course, you like to pair this with an espresso mm -hmm. because sometimes you have the sambuca with the espresso. This will take the place of the sambuca. You got that licorice. I think the two would pair. Really Do you well. think that any even one listener is believing that you are going to swap something out for the alcohol component of your pairing? Yes. Yes. It's, I don't think it's anyone like believes you. <laughs> so this is the Sumatra version. There are other versions of this. There are. We have a uh, the, both the, the Sumatran and the Connecticut, which is an Ecuadorian-grown Connecticut. Both are available in five sizes, the uh, traditional five sizes, okay. everything. And no Maduro. Is, no Maduro. There's no plans for a Maduro. No plans. No. So that's part of the thing I'm going to get into. I'm going to try to drag, if you've never seen, heard the show before, I want to tra drag some information. You came back from your national sales meeting. Yeah. You got information. You got anything that you know, weren't supposed to share. <clears throat> that's what we want. I wish I had <laughs> something because, you know, of all places, I'd love to, 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 you know, announce that stuff here. But we really don't have anything new in the books for 2018. Um, the focus of, of the Oliva company is we just opened up a, a new box factory down in Nicaragua. Um, supposed to be the largest box factory in the world. Uh, so For just your own stuff? For just our own stuff for oh, now. Really? Okay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, so I had the pleasure of visiting that in, uh, back in December, and uh, it was absolutely fantastic to see how that uh, European influence is ha has helped set, them, set that factory up. Um, everything was neat in its place, clean. It was just a well-run factory, just the way you would yeah. expect it to be. Not the third world place that it yeah. is, right? Yeah, yeah, you go outside of the gate and... Uh, there it is. Yeah. 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 I know where I am. Yeah. Uh, There's something about... Uh, uh, will the packaging be changing? Uh, no, no. All the box packaging, because of the you know the government issues, yeah. um, there's no plans to change any packaging Okay. Um, just until we get some, some definitive the answers. Answers, right. Right. So... Um, you know, and then the other focus is we're expanding our rolling facilities as well, um, down there. And they just started b doing the build out on that when we were down there. So, so growth is the plan. The growth is the plan streamlining. And, you know, one of the biggest complaints that people consumers give to me, um, always goes back to the V. Yeah. There's just, there's not enough of the double Toros and some of the other yeah. sizes. Um, you know, and I understand the, the frustration when consumers come and retailers, sure. the yeah. consumer comes through the door. Oh, I want, you know, we were fortunate to get the number three cigar of the year. You know, when someone walks in and wants that cigar, Man, we don't it's hard to, to look there. them in the face year right. after year and say, oh, we don't have that one again. Yes. So what the, what we're trying to do is we're trying to speed up some of the processes so we can turn out wrap relief a little bit more quickly than what we have been yeah. in the past. Um, and by so, quickly, you don't mean speeding up that actual aging process. You mean being able to process more raw tobacco to begin with, which is going to give you a greater yield when it comes time to producing wrapper. Well, that and, you know, in the process of, you know, the, when you go down to the, the, the aging rooms and barns, you, you've, you've been there a thousand times. Yeah. Since. You see the big bales of tobacco that are just sitting on the floor. You know, it takes a lot of manpower. That's the one thing that, I'm always amazed at is how much, how many times a tobacco leaf is touched from the time it's planted all the way to the time sure, it's yeah. put in a consumer's hand. It's until you go down to one of the factories and actually see that, it really, just to hear it, it just doesn't do any justification. And then it's six dollars at the end. Right, right, crazy, exactly. That's crazy. the crazy part. So yeah, what we're doing is we're speeding up that 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 process. So where it would take uh, you know four or five people a whole day to flip over one of those pallets. Um, there with the build out in the factory, we're going to be able to do two 
of those same pallets in 20 minutes. Wow. Really? So, and that's going to help age the wrapper. Just giving everybody a, just a bump of speed and just say, all right. That's all we're doing. A lot of go. caffeine. Yeah. yeah no, I don't, is it mechanical? <laughs> yeah. This, this. They put in these big wheel drums and I know. Okay. So, all right. That's what's going. Yep, so that's, that, so that's the plan for 20, 2018 is just to, to get what your production we, up. Right. What we do, we do very well. We just want to satisfy the demand for some of our yeah, you trim that, off some of the fat you mm-hmm. can produce that same exact product with the same high standards that's right a little quicker that's all right. right i want to get to uh the 10 commandments so let's take a break and when we come back the 10 cigar commandments what you should be doing and what you should not be doing we're live at studio 21 podcast cafe and you're listening to the cigar authority on the united podcast network This is David Garofalo, and you've heard me say it over and over again for many years. Please support your local cigar retailer. And I mean it. If you don't buy from them, they will go away, and then what? There'll be no place to go. That being said, sometimes you're far away from any cigar shops or a place that doesn't carry the stuff you've been hearing about and you want to try it. That's where TwoGuysCigars.com comes in. It's the number 2GuysCigars.com. And unlike most online cigar shops, at 2GuysCigars.com, you can buy a single cigar of whatever you want. You don't have to buy boxes or even five packs and suffer through cigars you might not even like. One of this and one of that is acceptable, appreciated, and commonplace at 2GuysCigars.com. That's the number, 2GuysCigars.com. Thank you for your business. Ooh, we're going to have fun. When the Cigar Authority returns on the United Podcast Network. There was a time when cigars were the hallmark of elegance and success. In this time gone by, the aficionado would revel in opening a beautiful box, only to find their favorite celebratory smoke emblazoned with a heritage-laden band. It's time to put the bundle down and travel back to this golden age. For your voyage, may we humbly suggest the only cigar worthy of being packaged in a handmade marble box. Berlin Wall Series from Hammer & Sickle. Live well. It's an exquisite day here at the Jensen Estate patio overlooking the 13th green. And we're underway. Jim Jensen has chosen his favorite stick, the Diamond Crown Number no. 4 by J.C. Newman. See the way he holds the cigar, Tom? Mm. Excellent balance and heft. Ooh, he's eyeing the silky Connecticut Shade Wrapper, fermented twice for the smoothest, richest flavor. And hand-rolled by the Fuente family with a blend of six to seven distinct Dominican and Caribbean basin tobacco leaves. Each lovingly aged for at least five years. Oh, now Jensen's lining up the diamond crown. He's got a precision burn, Tom. Mm, those highly complex flavors with hints of dark chocolate really deliver, Bill. Yes, like all cigars in J.C. Newman's premium diamond crown line. That'd be the highly rated Maximus and the Julius Caesar. Ah, now Jensen's settling in, rolling the rich smoke through his nose. Look at the satisfaction on his face, Bill. Oh, a thing of beauty, Tom. Experience the premium diamond crown brand by J.C. Newman at select retailers or diamond crown lounge near you. Find us on Facebook at J.C. Newman's Cigar Co. or visit diamondcrown.com. I want to talk to you today about my friend Glenn Case from Christoph Cigars. I've known him for many years. Glenn is a very nice guy, one of the nicest guys in the industry. Always friendly, always happy. So when I heard his brand Christoph was pissed off, I was surprised. Christoph Cigars have always been known as smooth and rich, and the pissed off Christoph is just that. But there's something else happening here. A natural San Andreas wrapper, the binder, Indonesian, and the filler, Nicaraguan. And like Glenn Case, the cigar starts off sweet, but then it gets pissed off. And like Bruce Banner, you don't want to piss off Glenn Case about Kristoff cigars. Or do you? Expect some spins and a nicotine kick. Strap yourself in for a ride. Pissed off Kristoff is deceivingly strong. You've been warned. Sold in 10 count boxes, four sizes including Churchill, 6x60, Robusto, and Corona Gorda. The hottest new brand is the Pissed Off Kristoff. Take it for a ride. Since 1964, Padron Cigars have had the same mission. With over 50 years spent to create a perfect cigar, and more than 100 years to create a perfect legacy. 
The Padron family understands the significance of time. Padron delivers only the finest handmade complex cigars with the flavor of the Cuban heritage, out of which the Padron recipe was born. The Padron mission is simple, exceptional quality of their cigars and not the quantity produced. As a vertically integrated family-owned company, personal attention to every detail is taken in all steps of the tobacco growing and cigar making process. Padron Cigars, they give you, the cigar smoker, the confidence that each cigar is the same. Perfect. Padron Cigars, handcrafted since 1964. I want to tell you about my friend Hochi Blanco, a fourth generation Dominican cigar maker known for growing tobacco and producing highly acclaimed cigars for other people. If some things stay the same, other things have to change. Finally, Hochi's factory, Tobacco Lera Palmer, has produced a cigar that not only belongs to the factory, but pays homage to the cigar rolling room known as La Galera. The La Galera Connecticut blend is special, using an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper surrounding a Dominican blend of Piloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and a varietal that Hochi named T112. With exception of the wrapper, Hochi grows all of the La Galera tobaccos himself and carefully watches over every step. The flavor smooth, but still offering plenty of flavor in all sizes, paying homage to the people and tools used in the factory. Now for the amazing pot. La Galera Connecticut has a suggested retail price ranging from $4.95 to $6 and has been awarded the Cigar of the Year by the Cigar Authority. La Galera Connecticut, creating their own version of the Connecticut cigar because they demand more. This is Mr. Jonathan Carney with La Florida Minicana Cigars and you're listening to the Cigar Authority. Not Mr. Anything. And we're back live from the La Florida Dominicana Cigar Sound Set, right above Two Guys Smoke Shop in Salem, New Hampshire. I found it, own, and operate a cigar shop now for 33 years, and I've seen the wrong thing being done every single day. With me, Todd Humes from Oliva Cigars. He's seen it being done wrong all the time. Also, and today you're going to learn, if you haven't heard this before, of what not to do in a cigar shop. It's the commandments of the cigar shop. Welcome back, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. We're smoking the Oliva, Gilberto Oliva. The Gilberto Oliva, and this is the Sumatra. Right, right it's the Correct. Reserva, where the Connecticut's the Reserva Blanc. Blanc. Ah, Blanc meaning white. That's yes. right. Get a good, hearty wheat bread, and you toast it up so it's real crunchy. Just a little bit of butter. Oh, that's what this is, has going on. <laughs> Screw you, Ed Sullivan. <laughs> 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 so uh, Chubb, though, in the chat room says he's getting marzipan versus the licorice. and uh, Because Joe, this isn't the care package. Everybody's yeah, got yeah. it. It's all good. And Joe Gutt is saying he's getting leather and Fig Newtons on the retro Fig head. Newtons. Big fan of the Fig Newton. And mm -hmm. I see it a little bit. I see a little mm -hmm. of sweetness from the fig in the outside of the thing. I do see that. I'm going to give you a bell for it. I, I see that. I don't know about the stick of the thing, and the, but a little bit on the bready thing because of the, uh, but not Thanks. butter on it. Thanks. I get a little bready fig, thing. I think Fig thing. Newton yeah. nailed it for nailed me. Nailed it, yep. Yeah. I think Fig Newton. The cookie part more than anything. Yeah. A little bit of the sweetness yeah. happening in the, uh, of, of it. It's good. Okay. Let's get to it. The Ten Commandments of Cigars by Miguel Chaudel. Um, he is a rep for Crown Heads right now. Yep, the national sales manager. National, oh, national sales. Okay. Um, good man, and he uh, did do this, so uh, it's time for us to dare do it. Mr. Jonathan, what is commandment number one? Number one is thou shalt not bring cigars purchased from online or other stores to another cigar shop. Only cigars purchased from said shop should be smoked in said shop. Not even smoked in there. It starts off with don't even bring them in. Right. Correct. Don't even bring them in. Don't bring them So in. this becomes the biggest argument of all because mm -hmm. now there'll be the questions of it. So I have this Cuban cigar that somebody gave me. And it's winter time there in New England, and I really want to smoke the cigar, and I can't smoke in my house. And what if I go into the cigar shop, and I purchase a cigar from them? Can I now smoke the Cuban cigar in the cigar shop? No. 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 Let's take the analogy of a 
across the street, we have a steakhouse, and they don't sell Chinese food. And you got some good Chinese food last night as takeout, and you got some extra that's left, and you always buy food in there anyway. Can you go in there, order a cheeseburger to go, and eat your Chinese food in the Chinese from the Chinese restaurant? In Barry, there? you had Barry at Chinese food. <laughs> yes, I'm just I know, and then he's getting so so I'm just thinking about you know number nine. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> Of course not. Can you bring a beer into a restaurant of the beer that they don't carry? Right, or even a bar you can Even one that they do carry. So not only can you – you can't bring a cigar not only that they don't carry, but even if they carry the cigar but you bought it from someone else, you go into the cigar shop and you buy a cigar from the cigar I'm gonna shop. Go, I'm going to go a step further is the cigars that you purchase today are the ones that you smoke today. today. You don't go in and you buy three or four cigars and then leave. And now and I got a four-day pass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't have a four-day pass. Which they, you don't if you buy food in the restaurant and then you take the take take home. Yeah, you take the dog and, go back and then bring it back the tomorrow. And there's, people back, that, right. no, there's people that are going to argue, well, it, it, this is completely different than a restaurant. Yeah, it's because you think it's your clubhouse. It isn't your clubhouse. It's, it's, a, it's a business, business that has to pay every single day electricity, mm -hmm. the air conditioning, the heat, the employees, the insurance, the maintenance. Believe me, it's Thousands. unbelievable. I only think there's one exemption. If you go to a shop that has lockers yes. and you bought the box in the store and you put it in your locker, right. it's okay to take that out yes. of your locker. Because you As are, it is for a restaurant, if you bought wine in the restaurant, correct. you put it in your locker. locker. Yes. It works exactly the same way. Yeah. It works exactly well, the same way. I, I just can't understand the strong argument on the other side. Because I, none of it is is logical at all. You can't. I know you want to do it, but that doesn't mean it's the right should, thing. It's the right thing to do. It's absolutely the wrong thing. Right. But I really want to really bad. Yeah, I understand. And f for the most part, you're gonna be able to get away with it because the guy in the cigar shop is embarrassed to go up to you and end up saying it. But he's thinking it. Oh, sure. But he's embarrassed to do it, or he doesn't want to lose you. He doesn't want to piss you off. Doesn't want to embarrass you in front of your friends. So you miss the cigar shop owner. Don't embarrass him in front of his friends. You say, excuse me one second. Come with me for a second. Yep. And you say, listen, you can't do this. Well, what, but, but, but. you just can't do it, and that's it. And you, you gotta, you're running the risk of losing that customer, but he ain't a customer. Right. He's not your customer. Right. So you let him go. And I, I hate to give up any customer, believe me, but with, with number one here, that's the most important that's a game one. changer. That's right probably there. the one that's. Uh, I don't even know the rest of. Right, the that's other the, nine. It's a worst that's one. The, right, that's the one that I see you time see and time day. again. Every they time. come in with their box mm -hmm. and they already have it. And if, if if they have a locker in that store, they bring stuff that they've purchased other places and stick it yeah, in the locker. Yeah, you can't. No. It, I see that all and, the time. And it's listen, I, I'm big into sharing stuff with people too, Absolutely. whatever it is. But then that guy could even give, oh, here, have one of these. The guy's getting up, oh, I'm getting this cigar. No, no, don't do that. Here, have one of these. Now it's two sales. That's right. You do that eight more times today, we're going to shut down. That's it. <laughs> Crazy, right? So please. Now that your blood pressure is all yeah, worked out. This, uh, this, this is the one that gets me the most. All right, go to number two. All right, number two is thou shalt not brag about the brand you smoke, how much your cigar costs, or how rare it is. Nobody likes a cigar snob. Absolutely. So you, you would see that more often, I would say 10 years ago, that people were bragging about it. And now what, what I'm hearing and seeing is quite the opposite of, oh, my God, you bought that cigar? So expensive. You should have bought this. It's only it's, – it's far less money. Mm -hmm. Well, remember, this guy is running this store and he's trying to sell that cigar. Right. And here you are ruining his mm -hmm. sale. Mm -hmm. Well, then that's that's not – Or exactly ruining the guy's – taste he likes it and you're telling him he shouldn't be smoking it yeah i think that's a different commandment that's sort of a sub commandment there but this is really about you know you you come in and you buy uh i just saw a thread in, in one of the groups about talking about favorite cigars and barry jumped in and said adabe that's the one if he could only smoke one cigar for the rest of his life adabe is the one is that my am I, am I you are 100 all right so Barry shouldn't be smoking Atabay in the store and making sure that the band is pointing right, out off. and waving it in front of people's right. faces and, and saying how, can't afford it. how great this is and I, I got my bonus this month, whatever it is. Just keep it to yourself. You smoke what you smoke and that's fine. I'm not saying be ashamed of it and cover it up. But the guy that can only afford to smoke a bundle brand shouldn't be made to feel bad because you can afford to smoke something more expensive. Right. I, I go one step further. Don't bring up what you're smoking. Only bring it up if you're asked. You know, that's what, a good what, one. Are you, what are you smoking good today? One. Well, today I'm smoking Gilberto Oliva. Don't go, hey, I'm smoking Gilberto Oliva. What are you smoking? Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. It's, and there is something to starting up a conversation and maybe you find a cigar that you haven't had before because I believe that a consumer's advice is often more valuable than the people that are working there. Yeah, sure. Their advice because this guy has nothing to gain lose or gain ever. by yeah. recommending a cigar that he likes. You know he likes it and he votes with his wallet every week. So, you know, maybe I'll try that cigar. There's nothing wrong with starting that conversation and saying, hey, Gary, what are you lighting up over there? Maybe Gary tells me and, and it's something new that I, that I want to try. And now go just jump back a little bit to number one. So you're smoking a cigar that's not from that store. And now the guy asks you about it. Yeah. Now you're running the risk of the guy saying, well, where do I where get those? Get that's right. And then, oh, my God, look what you just and, did and running, in the guy's store. Running the risk because that poor bastard that has to come in when it's snowing out and still be open. And he does $32 in sales that day. <laughs> he lost his shirt. Yeah. And you are the guy that's going to recommend that uh, this other cigar that he doesn't carry. You can't carry everything. Right. So if you're in that shop, smoke the cigars from that shop and keep your mouth shut if you're smoking something more expensive than everybody else. That's one and two. There we go. Let's go to number three. Thou shalt not mistreat a cigar. Your cigar probably unraveled because you cut it improperly. Probably. Or it burns crooked because you lit it wrong. Probably. When all else fails, please ask for help. And you know that's not going to happen because we could be lost and we're not going to ask anybody yeah. to help. Right? That's you. <laughs> that's you. <laughs> so you're not going to do that. But – the majority of times, not 100% of the time, this is a handmade product and, pro- and problems end up happening, but I'm going to say 90 out of 100 times. Well, let's say you, you did something 300 times in a day. Would you be pretty good at it? You got 15 years in doing some, the same exact thing 300 times a day. I think you're pretty good. Yeah. And if you're the guy that keeps going up no matter what you smoke and your cigar always burns wrong, your cigar is always uh, not drawing properly, your cigar is always unraveling, it's you. User error. So it's you. We have a we Because have it's a, a very uh, rare thing that the end of that rare. happens. Very rare. I'm going to add an addendum to this. If you're smoking a cigar that unraveled on you or it has a canoe and it's the first time you're smoking it, don't tell everybody in the lounge right. it sucks. You made the mistake, or even if you did make the mistake, give it another shot. Yeah. But never put down another brand just because you don't like it. Most or, likely, the store has tested that cigar before mm-hmm. they made the purchase. Sure. Right? You, you come to me and you say, oh, we have this new brand, Gilberto Oliva. First thing you do, here, see what you cut think of it. it. We cut it. We light it. We smoke about it. talk about it. And, thing, and I say, okay, it's burning good. Mm-hmm. It's smoking good. It's there. Maybe adding... Uh, that's with me, or who's, who's, Jonathan's with me, or who's ever there. He's smoking it too. He's looking at it. Yep. I get the little bow of the head or something. It's good. His is my good. Mine is good. Okay, we're in. I got. Uh, I got a question for you. Sure. Dave. Dave has done this to you, uh, but is, I'm wondering: is he the only one? He gets a cigar from you and says, "Could I? Could I trouble you for another one?" And then takes the cigar apart. To make sure that it's long filled. Is he the only one that does that? I haven't seen that done since I started in the industry a long time yeah. ago. Because yeah. there was so much of that. Because there was so much yeah. of that garbage yeah. that was out there. They sell you a long filled cigar and be shot it over right. stuff. I look inside at the different tobaccos that are in there and stuff, mm-hmm. and there's, there's a lot of people that's, that claim this is the makeup of our cigar. And I know so that. You can you know from there. <laughs> Just from the start of the wrapper, I haven't right. even unraveled it. So. That ain't Sumatra, and okay, let's go. Mm-hmm. What else do you got? Boom, and you start taking that away, and, and, and the cigar still may be good, but for whatever reason, maybe you don't want your competitors to hear the blend of right. what it is, or whatever the reason is, but at least I want to know what the answer is and, and, and look at it. So, so that, that was – It doesn't happen that often. Yeah. That was mistreating a cigar, and the next one is about abuse. Thou shalt not abuse a cigar. It is not okay to buy a double Corona and cut it in half – Putting out your uh, putting out your cigar to save it for tomorrow is considered ignorant. Those are both examples of abuse. Yeah, a yeah. double Corona is a two to two and a half hour cigar. If you don't have two to two and a half hours, smoke a different size. Plain and simple. And when it's over, it's over. That's right. You shouldn't be. There's no doggy bag when it comes. That's to That's not to say that you're started smoking a cigar before dinner to kind of pass the time, and then dinner happens. You could certainly relight that cigar after yeah. dinner, but. Don't cut it in half. Definitely don't cut it after it's been burned. It's going to taste like an ashtray. There's no way to get that out. Yeah. 
It's a mistake. It's actually insane mm -hmm. to end up doing it. And right now, it is time for the asylum. A peek into the asylum from our friends at Asylum City. They're coming to take me away, haha. -ha. They're coming to take me away, ho ho. Hee -he, ha -ha. To the funny farm where life is beautiful all the time. And I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats. And they're coming to take me away, ha ha. It's time for news from the insane asylum. Are there sometimes historic news stories that are too insane to be true, or are they? Brought to you by Asylum Cigars. Take no prisoners. Asylum Cigars are truly flavorful, medium-bodied Nicaraguan cigars with sizes ranging from 4x44 to the absolutely insane 8x80 Asylum Cigars. A scandal has rocked another beauty project pageant this week as contestants were accused of receiving Botox injections. The beauty pageant being held in Saudi Arabia has seen entries disqualified as veterinarians have been accused of performing the procedure on camels to make them look more delicate and attractive. Wow. The camel beauty pageant... That's one ugly animal to begin with, yes. right? What's more ugly than a camel? The camel beauty pageant has some big money attached to it as $57 million is awarded to wow. the winners. Wow. The pageant will now return to its roots of spitting, the size of their humps, and the depth of their camel toe. And that's not only insane, oh my it's God. asylum. <laughs> They're coming to take me away. I thought we were going to get one week. Take me yeah. away, ho, ho, he, he, ha, ha, to the funny farm where life is beautiful all the time. And I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats. And they're coming to take me away. When it's on a camel, I think it's just called the toe. The toe. <laughs> you know what's worse than the look of the camel? The ugliness of the camel? It was the smell of the yeah, camel. Pretty, yeah. pretty strong. They, yeah, it's they are. Pungent. Smelly, pungent. Yeah, it stings the nostrils. But people love their camels. They love their camels. Okay, so we have uh, four down, six to go. That's right. Number five. All right, thou shalt store cigars properly by a humidor or rent a locker at a cigar shop. Respect the hard work that goes into these hand-rolled products. Absolutely. So there's something that the care that goes into it is unbelievable. As Todd was saying earlier, that he goes there and he sees how many hands touch this tobacco that ends up going. Then it goes from there to a retailer. And hopefully the retailer is doing the right thing. And it's temperature controlled, it's humidity controlled, and everything's in perfect, as best as possible can be. And then it goes to you, the consumer. And then you get them. And you abuse the cigar at that point. All the work that went into mm -hmm. it. Horrible. And, mm -hmm. and, oh, can I keep my cigar in the refrigerator? No. No, it's you can't criminal. keep it in the refrigerator. Where do you put your milk in the refrigerator? Do you need, if we buy milk, do you say to the guy at the grocery store, where can I keep this milk? And they'll say, what, refrigerator? Well, can I keep it in the desk drawer? No, you cannot. It must be mm -hmm. in a refrigerator. Where must your cigar go? It must go into a humidor. That's what it's made for. Keep the cigar. Can you... Find ways around it in a plastic bag with a water pillow and a thing. And, yeah, there's cheap ways to go around it. If you're in the game, though, if you're going to be a cigar smoker, for God's sakes, just buy the humidor. Pull it off like a Band-Aid and end up doing it. And I'll tell you, as, as somebody, I got the desktop humidor when I started. And then it wasn't enough. And I got desktop number two and number three and number four. The happiest day of all was when I bought the big unit and I, and I got it. Why didn't I do this in the start? And then what the hell am I going to do with these other ones? I have one on my desk. But short of that, I want to, if, if I'm in for, for real. I've seen his big unit. It's big. Uh, here we go. It's very big. <laughs> and mine's bigger than yours, right? Yours is bigger than mine? There we go. So. <laughs> Been working on that my whole life. Okay, so take As it. is your humidor. There it is. So take care of your cigars. And that would be somebody, and I, and I think you actually called me up this week of somebody bought cigars before Christmas and brought oh the cigars God. back. And uh, so, so what is it? Forty days have passed, and now um, he smoked a cigar out of it. This thing, you know, it wasn't even in a humidor or anything. And we're gonna bring it back, and we'll use it for our own cigars to smoke. But the guy abused the cigars for forty days, and now says, "Let me take them back to the mm. store." Because, yeah, they don't taste right. Yeah, because they're wonder all dried why. out. Yeah, I wonder why, sir. And that's not good. You shouldn't do that to the cigar store, and it's not on here, but it don't. happens a lot. Yeah, happens a lot. These things are done over and over and mm -hmm. over, so we know that it happens, and we know the guy that ended up coming in here, we, we knew what you were trying to pull on us, and we let it happen anyway, but what are you going to do? It ain't going to happen a second time on the same guy. No. No, it is not. Okay. Thou shalt not bitch about prices of cigars. Every state has different tobacco taxes. Every shop has a different markup. If you don't 
like it. Find another place to buy your cigars. Right. So it's not their fault. They're in California, the 65% tax or Huge. wherever they are. Or you don't even know what their cost is to run. The, maybe they're in a, a downtown location in a place and their rent is high and their employees are high and ev- everything ends up. To, they're doing what they have to do. So you make the decision, do I want to buy the cigar or not? But to verbally say it out loud in front of every and other customers and things like that and say, what are you, crazy? $8 for this cigar? I saw this for $6. I heard about this cigar for six dollars on the cigar authority yeah it's six dollars in the non-tax state that right. when we're at mm-hmm. and even if we were in a non-tax state and we were in a high high rent district or something maybe it would be eight dollars right because we need the two dollars or right. whatever and you got you got uh, certain laws around for example cigar bars they have to have a certain percentage of tobacco versus liquor in order to have their cigar bar yes. license period right. they have to charge more for cigars because when was the last time you had two cigars per drink yeah. Never. It's a couple of drinks for each cigar, for each at cigar. least, right? Yeah. Right. So they end up having and I think that it. carries over to the internet, too. I saw somebody who purchased um, a cigar in a high-tax state, and he said he spent X dollars for it, and a person ripped into him, and you got ripped off. He, what's the name of the place so we know never to shop he, there? He bought it in a warehouse and, and, in the middle of nowhere. And somebody had to tell him he, he bought it in a state that has a 30% tobacco tax. That's why he does the more difference. money. Yeah. And the guy couldn't comprehend that. But tax, like you just said, taxes are different in every state. Yeah. And especially when you're talking about buying a couple of single cigars, really just shut up about right. that. I understand you're talking about boxes and boxes of cigars, and you got to do what you got to do, but support your local brick and mortar. 100%. Find something at the price range you want to be at. Yeah, that's right. So you're looking at your, your $6 cigar that's $8. You don't want to spend $8. And find, find something for $6. $6. Right. Yeah. Ask ask for a recommendation. They don't be afraid to ask for I help. want to spend $6. And maybe you're going to find a new favorite. Right? Okay. Oh, you want to spend $6, get the Gilberto Oliva. There you go. Right. This is worth $6 every day. Oh, my God. Value right mm-hmm. here. And we got a whole bunch of people smoking at the same time. So one more. Squeeze one more in. Thou shalt not be rude about smoking a cigar. We cigar smokers are respectable, tax-paying people. You represent all of us while in public. All right. So that's saying that you don't blow the smoke in somebody's face. You don't smoke. With, you know, I see online that people stand in front of signs that say no smoking. And there they are smoking a cigar. That's not good for anybody. It's not good. It's not funny. It's it's bad. It makes us all look bad when you mm-hmm. end up doing that. Respect the, the sign of it. But if you're in a public place where smoking is okay, you still and you're around people that aren't lit up. You got to ask them. Listen, do you mind if I smoke this and figure out where the wind is blowing so it's not blowing yeah. on them? You know, yeah. be be respectable. And, and we wouldn't have it so bad if people did it more respectful. It wouldn't be as bad because well, we wouldn't run around with a bullseye on us. Right, as an industry, as bad as it is. Right. So that's uh, 7 out of 10. we got three more to go, but we're out of time for this hour, so we're going to go to break. Before we do, what do you think? Gilberto Oliva. Very good. $6, it's unbelievable, right? You guys are all smoking it on the Kia package. How do you beat that? Can't beat that with a stick. Yep. There it's we complex, go. complex, great drawer, tremendous bang, uh, burn line. They, they've been around. These guys yeah, know what they're you doing. can't find any fault in the cigar. All right. When we come back, the final commandments and some commandments and messages from the chat room. As you're chatting in there, Barry's putting some things together and see some of uh, your comments. Instead of waiting for the, the hate mail to come, maybe we'll just uh, read some off right off the bat and pull it off like a Band-Aid. We're live from Two Guys Smoke Shop in Salem, New Hampshire, in the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Stepping into the aging room has a new meaning at Aging Room Cigars as Raphael Nodel has traveled to Spain, where the idea for Aging Room Solera was born. The Solera method of aging has been used for centuries in the making of wine, sherry, brandy, and rum. The method mixes different vintages, allowing them to age together. For Aging Room Solera, Raphael takes several tobacco vintages and puts them in bales where they age together for another 12 to 18 months. This allows the tobaccos to marry for a longer period of time. At the end of the aging process, Aging Room Solera becomes a balanced and complex cigar with a fantastic price point. Aging Room Solera. It will have you calling for an encore. 
In a time where humidors are overflowing and retailers shelves are on the verge of buckling, there is one brand that stands out amongst the rest. Sereno Cigar Company offers four distinct blends. The Connecticut, the Medio, Maduro, and Maduro XX, all aged to perfection. Crafted at the La Corona Cigar Factory in Esteli, Nicaragua, each artfully crafted blend comes to life by the experienced hands of master blender Omar Gonzalez Aleman and industry veteran Anthony Sereno. To create this masterpiece, a combination of hand-selected filler tobaccos from the fertile soil of Esteli and Jalapa are aged for over five years and then draped with a luxurious wrapper leaf to bring you an endlessly complex and majestic experience. A post-roll aging process of two additional years allows the blend to marry, creating unmistakable and ever-changing tasting notes that tantalize the palate, leaving you anticipating each and every drop. Visit SerenoCigars.com for a list of retailers, and you can always find Sereno Cigars available online at TwoGuysCigars.com. Sereno, a majestic cigar aged to perfection. You've heard us talking before about the best cigar magazine in the world, Cigar Journal. You want to know what makes Cigar Journal the best cigar magazine? Cigar Journal covers every angle of the cigar world. From exclusive stories and features, insightful interviews with industry power players, detailed cigar reviews, and of course, all the latest news and reports surrounding premium cigars. We're telling you, you will be impressed. Cigar Journal has stunning images, explanations of Cigar Science Basics, this is the magazine for any cigar enthusiast, or better yet, passionado. Cigar Journal covers cigars in the U.S. and around the world and is printed right here in the USA. You owe it to yourself to discover the world's best cigar magazine, Cigar Journal. Available at your local cigar retailer and on the web at their new website, CigarJournal.com. That's CigarJournal.com. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Let me tell you a little bit about the Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary Cigar, or what they call the Three-Peat. Crafted in Rocky's boutique Nicaraguan factory, the 15th anniversary was released in 2010 to commemorate Rocky Patel's 15th year in the cigar industry, and it impressed right out of the gate. The Robusto and the Torpedo both scored 93 points in Cigar Aficionado, while the Toro and Corona Gorda both notched 92 points. The Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary is a robust cigar with notes of toasted spice, roasted coffee, and almonds. Rocky Patel himself has referred to his 15th Anniversary as the Decade on Steroids. The 15th anniversary has also been named the Cigar Aficionado's Top 25 Cigars of the Year list on three separate occasions. Rocky's only brand to accomplish the three-peat. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. The La Galera Habato uses a classic wrapper on a staple cigar for a classy company. Hi there, this is David Garofalo of the Cigar Authority, and I want, no, no, I need to tell you about La Galera Habano. The La Galera Habano is an authentic cigar elaborated with the hands of the best cigar rollers of Tobacalera Palma in the Dominican Republic. Blended around an outstanding, flavorful Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, the Dominican-grown Corojo binder and the filler made up of Peloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and Peloto de Oro, creating a medium to full-bodied, attractively consistent, and aromatic smoke that envies no other. I love this cigar. Have you tried La Galera Habano yet? Well, what are you waiting for? Available at Better Cigar Shops worldwide is La Galera Habano. The wait is over. La Galera Habano. Justo and his father Julio Eiroa are continuing the tradition of growing authentic Corojo and now bring you Aladino. Aladino is a true old-fashioned cigar, pure authentic Corojo grown in the Eiroa tobacco farms in Honduras from the original Cuban seed of Corojo. An Aladino cigar represents the golden era of cigars in Cuba and after one light, this old school smoke will bring you back. Aladino cigars come from JRE Tobacco, a family center company who manage all aspects of cigar growing and manufacturing. This crop to shop operation 
is fully committed to providing you with quality and satisfaction. The premier Corojo grower in the entire cigar industry is Julio Eiroa, a tobacco grower and master cigar blender who personally guarantees that Aladino will provide you the opportunity to enjoy the true authentic Corojo taste. Take this journey and be part of history in a cigar smoking experience like no other. Aladino. This yep. is the Cigar Authority. That's right. The authority. We can't have anyone freak out out there, okay? On everything cigar. That's too far. Yeah. There's too much to lose. And out of the cigar industry. <laughs> with your host, Come with the other. David Garofalo. Count of three, name your favorite dinosaur. Don't even think about it. Just name it. Ready? One, two, three. Velociraptor. Mr. Jonathan. You know what? I respect women. I love women. I respect them so much that I completely stay away from them. Very stuff. What an incredible Cinderella story. This unknown comes out of nowhere. The former gravekeeper now about to become the Masters champion. It's time to light him up. Favorite non-pornographic magazine to masturbate to. It's time. Good housekeeping for the Cigar Authority. We just become best friends. Yep. And we are back with our number two, broadcasting live from the La Flor Dominicana Cigar Sound Set. The Ten Commandments are a set of rules or laws God gave the people of Israel. As for the commandments... Of cigars, they are for the consumer, like it or not. Welcome back, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. I, I like what you did there. Here we go. You're listening to the Cigar Authority, broadcasting over eight years, making it the longest continually running cigar podcast. Awarded the Ambassadors of Cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine. Awarded the top ten educational podcast by Podbean four years in a row. The Cigar Authority is the most listened to podcast in the world. On Cigars, it's Cigar Radio at its finest. The Cigar Authority is a proud member of the United Podcast Network. Catch the podcast on demand at any time or our daily blog on thecigarauthority.com. I could have easily another half hour with the Gilberto Oliva. Mm -hmm. And this burns slow. slow. This was just a Toro, right? Yes, sir. So a long time with that. In the interest of full disclosure, you also talk a lot. I do. (laughs) I do. (laughs) So, uh, first off, our, our coffee today, I don't know if you've ever had this, Todd, before. This is Nitro Cold Brew. It's very, very nitrogen. tasty. So, it's only black coffee with mm-hmm. nitrogen, but it looks like it's uh, creamy. Mm-hmm. It's Guinness looking, right? But sure. it looks creamy. There's no cream in it. Tastes sweet. There's no sugar in it. Zero, zero calories. It's great. It is right. good. Good for you. Cheers. And it's got a little kick to it. It does. On top of it, so it makes it even better. No yawning. There'll be no yawning. <laughs> so Miguel Chaudel is from Crown Heads. He came up with this Ten Commandments of Cigars. So uh, out of respect to him, the second cigar we're going to light up is something from Crown Heads. Um, this is the uh, the Four Kicks Maduro. Barry, tell us about it. Yep, and as you said, our second cigar is the Four Kicks Maduro. It's manufactured in the Dominican Republic by Tabacalera La Alianza for Crown Heads Cigar Company. The size that we are smoking is a Sublime, which measures 6 by 54. It features a Connecticut Habano Maduro wrapper over binder and fillers from Nicaragua. A single cigar price will set you back $10.59, while a box is just $224.99, which is a savings of just under $30, or 11.5% off the single price at twoguyscigars.com. If you're too far away from a brick-and-mortar retailer that carries it, Try twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com. So this is interesting. Do you know what kind of wrapper this is? Uh, it's a Connecticut Habano Maduro. Okay. So not the prettiest wrapper looking. Nope. But a unique, great tasting cigar. But this is the way the wrapper is. So that's the way it is. So, you know what? Thou shalt about, not bitch about the wrapper. <laughs> of, of, of the look of what it is, because it is that way. Absolutely. That's the, the idea of it. So, well, not the prettiest looking uh, one over there. Let's give it a taste and light and see what it's all about, because sometimes that ends up fooling you. Uh, it's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand. While all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Okay. Cold drawer reminds me of sunflower seeds. Cut a little further. Pumpkin Tabasco. Seed. Tabasco. I got Tabasco. Tabasco. Mm. Hot like that? Mm-hmm. 
Nothing, Ed Sullivan? I get nothing for that? There's no Tabasco? None. So, Mr. Sullivan, what do you get? Is Sullivan with, without a microphone today? No. no. He's oh. got a microphone. Very Just quiet over there today. I am very quiet. All right, so what are we going to use? We're going to use this big honking $150 lighter. We are lighting <laughs> our cigar today with the Vertigo Intimidator. It retails for $24.99. It features a neck that can bend so that you can get even better accuracy on uh, the lighting of your cigar. Four jets with a color-changing flame. And the patented Vertigo big-ass tank. It retails for $24.99 and is the Vertigo Intimidator. This is a tweener. This could be a table lighter or a pocket lighter. Or you could just be happy to see me. That's right. <laughs> so do you keep it curved in your pocket or do you keep it straight in your pocket? I keep it curved because it tucks yeah. into the pocket. Like a gun? Boom. It's like a gun. It's very gun-like. $29, you said? $24.99. Sean got where I was going. <laughs> You're going the wrong direction. Oh, whatever, whatever the, that direction <laughs> is, it's the wrong direction. So we've gone through seven of the ten. Let's move on to the commandment number eight. Number eight, thou shalt not go to a cigar event expecting a free cigar. If you cannot afford one, you shouldn't have gone to the event. If you do receive a free cigar or enjoy free refreshments, buy something. Nobody likes a mooch. So, Todd, with the FDA regulations now in place, mm-hmm. we're not allowed to give out samples to people. Mm-hmm. Have people begun to catch on to that, or do they still hit you up for samples? No, there's, there's certain consumers up, out there that will still inquire about getting a free cigar. The douches. Once they, once they figure the out. Yeah, once we, they figure we out. We call them. It's a technical term. <laughs> once they figure out um, you know, that a rep's walking in the door, uh, you know, it's – and that's the, the past 20 years is, you know, people were always walking in, reps handing out cigars with the uh, with the approval of the shop owner. Yeah. Um, but think of what it's, that it's, does to the store. I know. you got 10 guys in the store. You've taught me that a long time oh ago. Oh, my God. And I still, and that, and load everybody up with cigars and, hey, how was sales today? We actually didn't sell any cigars. The, the rep came in. Right. We're out of business. If a rep, you get a rep every single day, out of business. So th- that, that that FDA, you know, rule is kind of helped and it's it's a good thing for the industry it, it, for, that very, it, yeah, for that very it's, reason. It's tough to say there's an FDA rule out there that's actually good for Right, you, but, but that's one of them. At least it cleaned up. Um, you don't look like the bad guy anymore. It's the government now. Uh, I would love to give you one, but the government will not mm-hmm. allow me to do call you. Call you. But what rep. is allowed is buy two get one free. That's right. You know, try two of uh, two of the naturals. I'm going to give you one of mm-hmm. well, this one or things like that, which is which is okay because it's not a problem of giving somebody something that there has to be a, it, a it's something a value. Yeah, a yeah qualifying purchase. Right. Yeah. Um, it, at the very beginning, I mean, the thought was that the retailer wasn't going to get any. Right. There was a, a, then it was like a panic thing. And not that I want anything for free. I, I, I'd buy it or whatever. But remember, we don't even carry it yet. Yeah. So how do you end up how trying to get a new cigar into a how store? Do you, do you want the guy that owns the shop to buy a cigar as a sample so that he can then decide if he's going to buy them all? And at the beginning, do you remember, in. we ended up having yeah. to send money in to, yeah, to, there was a, to company a certain company. That was to get samples or whatever, they, you know. They sold us a box at like ten dollars. Yeah, but it was still a purchase. It was you know buy one get nineteen free. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. But, but all these things ended up happening. Yeah, people tried to get a little too creative instead of just stepping yeah. back and say, all right. Well, but then see. then the FDA saw this and ended up saying, okay, yes, it is um, business to business or whatever right. the terminology was. And that's what I'm hoping is going to end up as this is going and they're learning because they're ignorant mm-hmm. of how this whole industry ends up working. It's not like a pack of Marlboro cigarettes that the guy in the cigarette store needs to taste what a Marlboro cigarette tastes like to buy it, but we certainly do. Right. Uh, to, to make that, to be able to make that purchase and actually know at that point, what is this geared towards what customer? Because you, the consumer, you come in and you say, yeah, I want a medium bodied cigar and I would know to go to that Gilberto Oliva would end up working, but not if I never tried. Now there's, you know, well, it looks a little stronger than it actually right. is, which right. isn't always the case. Right. With Maduro right. Which can be deceiving. Like that, right. right. So uh, that would be that. So um, um, don't expect a free cigar. If you get one, say thank you and then buy something in the store mm-hmm. or whatever. You know, didn't your mother bring you up right? Right? That's what you do <laughs> anyway. It's some common of these sense. Things, yeah, some of these things seem common sense, but uh, it was good that he wrote it down. And maybe um, you're a nice guy out there and you said, you know, that's right. I should 
when I go in there and have free food from the place, I should actually buy something, right? I know I go there all the time and do buy things, but the day that they're doing that, I should do it too. But I don't need a cigar that day. Just do it anyway. Right. Do the right thing. Yeah. Thou shalt not be fooled by fake cigars. Those Cubans you bought on your cruise for 50 bucks were fake. Do not go around bragging about them. People are laughing behind your back. Huh. Or in front of your face. Glass top. Never. Yeah, never. You know, we see it posted online every day, yeah. all day. Hey, are these real? Oh, my God. Nine out of ten yeah. times they're fake. Yeah. So, uh... The, the place to smoke your Cuban cigars, even if they were real, is someplace other than a cigar shop in the United States. I because can't sell them. Because going all the way back to number one, they didn't sell them to you. Yes. You don't smoke them in their shop. Right. You don't bring them in. You don't talk about them. You don't take a picture inside the shop of you smoking the cigar because now maybe somebody's going to perceive that as you are selling them right, in there. Right. The store gets them in trouble bad, over it. Bad, bad so things many happen. things can go, go wrong. You know, are you showing off that you have a Cuban cigar or whatever? Back to whatever number that was. Don't show off. Mm -hmm. yeah. We've had it happen. That's yeah. a back porch cigar. Yes. Yes. Sit on your back porch and yep. smoke. Yep. That's where it belongs. Yep. And uh, the last one. Always have an extra cigar on hand. You never know when you may run into a brother of the leaf that needs a cigar in a pinch. You may make a new friend. And that would be out of the cigar shop. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that would be, again, <laughs> out of the cigar <laughs> shop, of course, because giving a cigar in the cigar shop is taking a cigar away from the guy that owns the cigar shop. Mm -hmm. uh, unless you give it to him, he puts it in his pocket, he's going to take it and smoke it someplace else or anything that's okay but of the guys getting up i'm going to get another cigar no no here have one of these dog rockets that i bought online and whatever oh okay good no sale for the guy smoking dog a cigar rocket. and one two three mistakes that happen right. all at once you can chain these up. And, and my favorite is on the florida turnpike once i'm heading home stuck in traffic there's a plumbing <laughs> van next to me and the guy goes hey you got an extra cigar the traffic sucks Threw it from my window into his window. Uh, I've done it too. And That's all a of a sudden story. now traffic is better for him as it was for me. My, I have vanity plates. New Hampshire vanity plates. My vanity plate is cigar. So I cannot tell you how many times that has happened over the years. Those vanity plates cost a lot. <laughs> Mine says <laughs> not product. <laughs> but there's cigars in my glove compartment and, you know. No, we had uh, we had discussed an <coughs> amendment to the cigar commandments. I don't know that it's necessarily a full commandment, but – Thou shalt own a cutter. Yes. Do not do what you do and Barry. Let the whole end of your, <laughs> your cigar and, and deep throat it and get the saliva dripping and then ask to use my cutter. That's and don't just, use the store cutter. You're just making the employees yeah. have to wash another cutter. Now, Barry's pretty good at it because he even does it and then he takes a picture and he does reviews on yeah. a cigar that you can use a cutter on. So you do it, but you show, you're doing a disservice to the cigar. That's what it's there for. Uh, this particular cutter, by the way. The Lotus uh, Jaw is very good. Because it has a syringe thing to it and stuff. Serrated, Serrated edge. Syringe. Yeah. Syringe, whatever. syringe is clean. something that you use to shoot up heroin. All right. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> up here in New Hampshire. You get the idea. But look, beautiful cut that it ends up giving. The and Jaws cutter is the best cutter on the market, in my opinion. And you're allowed to use my Jaws cutter if you don't have a cutter on you. But that is not okay once you put the cigar in your mouth. No. Now all bets are off. Right. Now, oh, we have a cutter for you, but you really should have your own cutter if you're that type of guy anyway that likes to lick the cigar or something. And, and you know what? There's Multiple times, cutters. Have, there's, have them in your glove compartment. Have them in your pocket. Have them in your When it's bag. your cutter, there's times when you're going to cut the cigar and you're going to take a pull and you're like, ah, I didn't quite get enough mm. off yeah. of it. And that's your spit going on your cutter. Completely acceptable. Someone else's cutter – you got to deal with the first cut. That's it. Yeah, that sword never went away, right? On your mouth. No, <laughs> <never went away. laughs> I shouldn't have borrowed your cutter. Yeah, well, you're hey, my mind. Dave? Yeah. I have one question about these commandments. If I habitually violate them, do I end up in cigar hell smoking? You do. Smoking you dog do. rockets it, for eternity. Yeah. Well, maybe no cigars at all. No Ooh. cigars at all, yeah. Let's stop talking crazy over here. Yeah. No cigars in cigar hell? I would imagine, because if there's no cigars in heaven, I shall not go. And also hot flames from vertigo lighters with ah. infinite big-ass tanks. There we go. That would be the way the to go. The infinite tank. Mm. Yes. I like that. I always joke around that I'm going to hell, and my hell will be a room full of cigars and nothing to light them with. 
That would be my personal health. Well, if you're in hell, it's pretty hot down there, so I'm sure you can I figure something out. I won't have access out. to the plane. <laughs> All right, let's find out what's up the in the cigar world yeah. with Barry Stein. It's time for What's, what's up? up in the Cigar World, brought to you by Recluse Cigars. You want to know what's up? Recluse Cigars is what's up. Voted the 2015 Cigar of the Year is the Recluse Amadeus Reserva Habano. Every recluse cigar goes through eight, count them, eight fermentation cycles over the course of two full years. They are box-pressed and rolled end to bar for a perfect draw every time. If you haven't done it yet, be sure to try a recluse cigar today. And this week saw the introduction in India, Indiana rather, of SB23, which if passed will allow employers to test their employees for use of tobacco and fire them if they test positive. It would also allow employees the right to refuse health insurance to those who test positive for tobacco. Drugs, mandatory. they got to keep them on and give them treatments. Yes. Alcohol. But tobacco, you're fired. You're fired. You're fired. Washington State will once again try to raise the tobacco purchase age to 21. If the measure passes, it will go into effect January 1, 2019. And this week, both Davidoff and Altatus made changes to their sales and marketing departments. Davidoff went in-house where Altatus hired the former head of marketing for Dr. Pepper Snapple Group. That'll be interesting. That'll be interesting. Yeah. See how much they change it with a different mindset. Yeah. And uh, lastly, Toro Fuente announced they are opening a factory in Nicaragua. The factory will be called Gran Fabrica La Bella y La Vista. Rolls which, off the tongue. Which Rolls translates the to The Beauty and the Beast. Really? And that's what's up in the cigar world. What's up in the cigar world was brought to you by Recluse Cigars. The Recluse Amadeus Habano Reserva uses grade A Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, a San Andreas binder, a Dominican Lajero Seco, and Pennsylvanian broadly filler tobaccos, which create a blend we call the Cigar of the Year. Recluse Cigars is what's up on the uh, Fuente thing. Is there any? Are they making Dominican cigars in they Nicaragua? Will, they will be making Nicaraguan cigars in Nicaragua. So yeah. the plot of land where this thing is going to be built and their farms is roughly two and a half times the size of what they have in the Dominican Republic. But they don't have any Brands. Nicaraguan front marks right now. Uh, no, they do not. So how are they going to pull that up? Acquisition. It, it could be acquisition. Acquisition. Could be for European market, much like Skip Martin is doing with his Wanderlust in, in Germany. Um, Come and, on, there's a lot there. There's a, I, I, I'm going to make up like 10 new things. <laughs> <laughs> and the factory was uh, designed by Manny Ayarate, who does uh, a lot of work with uh, the Fuente family. To design what the factory is going to look like. So yeah. it's going to be a showpiece. Yes. Uh, very interesting and awesome to see that, you know, we, we lost Carlos Fuente last year mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. And um, that it's full steam ahead. It's uh, moving on uh, and, and growing from that point. So um, the thing is about Fuente, they move very slowly. Yes. So don't look for your uh, look on the shelves quite yet. No, although they did break ground already this week. Okay. But I'm sure it's going to be a couple of year build out. Sure. And then maybe he's already acquiring tobacco already and Adrian mm -hmm. doing everything, but I bet we're a few years before we see one of those cigars roll off. Yeah. Uh, I would guess. Anyway, uh, very interesting stuff there. Next week, uh, what's in your humidors? Cigars you haven't smoked and why? And Barry told me after the show, uh, he smokes everything right away and he has nothing. So I'm going to add a little thing to that. What have you wanted and not had? So maybe, you know, the, the cigar that you never got your hands on and wish you ended up having it or you ended up smoking through it and you should have kept some of them or whatever. We'll add to that. I got plenty in my humidor, but we need a two-hour show yeah. one way or the other. So we'll add that caveat to that uh, on next week's show. After that, February 10th, we're going to start uh, introducing the employees here and seeing what they have to say and add to it. And uh, February 17th, Cigars and Social Media. And that includes other podcasts and uh, different medium media that's out there on uh, cigars of people talking about. So that's up and coming stuff. Thank you to the people uh, writing to us and giving us ideas what to do. Keep them coming. Also, I expect a big week this week of people saying, 
I want to smoke cigars, whatever I want, in whatever store, whatever you got to end up saying, uh, go to the Contact Us That's right. page on the CigarAuthority.com. That's where you can write in and charm. If, you, if you're talking to us live, Barry's looking. Anybody have any uh, anything? All right. So there, there are still some bars that allow um, smoking throughout the U.S. Uh, I know in Georgia you can smoke in strip clubs. And a lot of times they'll have a case with like four or five boxes of cigars. Is it okay to bring your own cigars into a place like that that's not really selling cigars? No. They have them as a convenience. It's usually a flavored cigar or what have you. Well, if, well but if they have a choice of the regular cigar, they sell cigar. If they sell cigars, if they sell whatever product they sell in, in them, no matter what, <clears throat> you go into a restaurant, they sell food. You shouldn't be buying any food. They're a restaurant. But, you know, they also serve alcohol in there. So you shouldn't be bringing any alcohol in there, too, because it's a right. business. That's what they do. You know what? They sell cigars in there also. Well, then you shouldn't bring cigars in there. Right. It's a now, business. There is, it's there part is of their business. One place, and that would be the golf course, they certainly sell cigars. and But that is a convenience sale <laughs> sure. for you to show up and, oh, I forgot my cigars, and they have cigars right. there as a convenience. I think that's probably – Also, they have shirts and they have golf yeah. clubs, and you right. don't have to buy your golf clubs there either. Right. And, yeah, yeah. It makes sense, right? So it's all logical. And then one more question from the chat room is uh, – if you go to a cigar bar that has a full array of cigars, but they also offer a cutting fee, if you're willing to pay said cutting fee, is it okay to bring your own they, cigar? They're saying that it is okay. okay. They're actually giving you that option, and they're going to charge you 10 bucks right. to smoke your own cigar in there, and there's your option of what it is. Should cigar stores be doing that? I don't think so, no, because yeah. that's what we're in the business right. doing. I, I don't even want to offer that option. Yes. I want you smoking our cigars in our cigar store. I do. Um, I don't know if cigar sh shops do that, but I have heard it's, that about There are some bars. of them that, yeah, it's more, more on the bar end. Yeah, it's definitely more on the bar, and they'll have that ten dollar or fifteen dollar cutting fee because they only have a small right. option of cigars, right. and and it, and is your option. So listen, I always I own a cigar shop. I got two million cigars. Mm -hmm. I go to a cigar bar. I buy a buy cigar, cigar. And, I, and I overpay, and I do the right thing, and I buy. I don't bring my own booze when I go in there either, and you shouldn't either. We did the uh, the show at uh, Mickey Blake's in uh, Connecticut, and we bought cigars when we were there. Right. Cigars that we were going to smoke in the show, we bought there. Right. Just the right thing to do. Okay, some early thoughts here on Four Kicks Maduro. So uh, I talked about maybe it's going to have a um, different taste to it of more than what it looks like. I got a little heaviness on my chest, so I'm going to say for me, this is uh, medium plus. Yeah. Leaning toward full bodied. As far as the strength <laughs> component goes, but pleasant tasting. It's got a little now, sweetness to it. Now, here's where the licorice comes in. Not on the, the cigar we had before, the Gubbard Oliva. This is the licorice. See, I'm getting mocha off of this. A, a yeah. heavy mocha uh, chocolate. I don't know if you remember the Hostess Cakes with the white squirrelies on top. I do. That, it reminds me of the chocolate. You know, you <laughs> ask him You ask him every single time if he remembers every single Hostess product. <laughs> yeah. He's yes, never he forgot a Hostess product in his life. He forgets people's names. <laughs> calls me Hey You sometimes. But he's never forgot a hostess cupcake, ever. The Yankee Doodle. So here we go. Now we're going to talk about the Yankee Doodle. The only good thing is we're not eating right now, so I don't have to field three more emails complaining about the smacking <laughs> and the chewing. It's part of our job. It's what we do. Do you like the cigar? It's a little, it, little getting there on the heavy end. It's, it's, it's not something that I would smoke on the on a regular basis just because of the heaviness, and I don't do well with it. But uh, as far as the taste goes, if I could get this flavor with a lower strength level, I would like it. Is and this, we smoke these in the right order. Sometimes we'll smoke the heaviest cigar right. part. Mm -hmm. we, we went and we did a nice transition. Yes. We went from a cigar that was a four or five in strength to a cigar that's like a seven, maybe eight in strength. Yeah. It's getting up there. It's starting to, yeah, it's starting to, to build, build up. Yeah. So I'll be tapping out at the end of the show probably. <laughs> it's not – I'm not going to go to the nub on this because it's going to knock me out. Yeah, Dave, you should have consulted me. Uh, the corona is not as strong as it. Oh, really? No. Interestingly enough, no. I've smoked about 30 or 40 of the coronas, so I, I was surprised this is a bit stronger. Wow. And usually you'd I would tend to think the, the smaller ring gauge is going sure. to be packed with more power. The corona is a little bit more sweeter and a little bit more complex. Well, I would think that that makes sense because you have less tobacco. Therefore, you're going to have less Lajero. In that cigar, it would have to be milder, being a thinner ring gauge. If you had the same amount of hair as this, not it wouldn't typically, burn. No. Not, not typically, Ed Sullivan? Not typically. Here we go. 
And he's a Corona you're, smoker. No, you're conf- you guys are both confusing nicotine strength with flavor. You're going to have more flavor on the Corona, but it cannot be stronger. It cannot have more Lajero in it or it wouldn't burn. It couldn't. You got something. You're talking about weighting grams of Lajero. You have to have less for, Lajero in the Corona. All it has to have is more percentage-wise. Percentage-wise yeah. of, of the ring gauge. But percentage-wise isn't going to do anything. You're still going to have less. You can have... More percentage, but it would be less weight. But you're getting more flavor from that. You get more less flavor, more flavor out of it because you're going to have less of the combustible right. around it. All right. I, well, I would think 12 percent is still going to give you the same percentage. Like 12 percent Lajero is still going to give you the same amount of nicotine. If there is nicotine in the cigar, we're not scientists. We don't know if that's the case. There is some nicotine. But if it's 12 percent, have you taken leave of your <laughs> it's 12, senses? If it's 12 percent in the Corona on the ratio, and it's 12 percent on the Robusto on the ratio. I would have to say that the content's close to the same. Folks, I'm not a scientist, but there's some friggin' nicotine in all cigars. There is. Going out on a limb? Going out on a limb. All right, let's go to break. We'll continue this argument uh, during our break. When we come back, the offer of the day, the classic three-way, and more about the feedback from our audience and listeners. We're live from Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Let's talk a little about Rough Rider cigars. So here is where the motorcycle culture meets cigar nation. This badass looking cigar uses the name Rough, but delivers a smooth as silk ride each and every time. Even before lighting one, you can't help but notice its sweet like honey flavor. Smooth and creamy, resembling slightly sweetened butter. Outstanding! The Rough Rider Cigar is so beautiful in so many ways. We're talking a premium cigar, imported, long filler cigar, but wait till you hear the price. Every cigar is in the $3 price range. That's right. Even the Churchill in the 6x60, every cigar is in the $3 price range. Rough Rider Cigars. There's nothing rough about Rough Rider except a name. Rough Rider Cigars. The following message is brought to you by Drew Estate. Drew Estate, the rebirth of cigars and the new Drew Diplomat app. Join me, Barry Stein, from the Cigar Authority on Drew Diplomat. As you know, I am quite partial to Liga Pavana number 9 from Drew Estate. So join me for a Liga and share your experience with Drew Estate. And while you're at it, don't forget to check into Two Guys Smoke Shop on the Drew Diplomat app. Drew Diplomat is now available for the iPhone and Android. To learn more about Drew Diplomat, visit Drew DrewDiplomat.com. That's DrewDiplomat.com. You must be at least 21 years of age or older and a resident of the United States, including D.C. To be eligible for membership in this program, other terms and conditions apply. Surgeon General warning, cigars are not a safe alternative to cigarettes. Since 1903, when La Aurora Cigars first opened their doors as the first cigar factory of the Dominican Republic, they have defined Dominican cigar manufacturing. Now, La Aurora continues that innovation with La Aurora Dominican DNA, featuring an exceptional blend whose soul is the Anduyo. La Aurora pays tribute to the oldest Dominican tobacco process with a cigar that features tobacco that is part of their heritage and their DNA. The La Aurora DNA features this hard-to-work tobacco that brings the unique characteristics of strength, inspiring aroma, and sweetness that creates an exceptional smoking experience that only La Aurora can bring you. Experience La Aurora Dominican DNA with its Cibao Valley Dominican wrapper, an authentic Cameron binder from Africa with fillers from the Dominican Republic, Pennsylvania, Nicaragua, and Anduyo. Available at top retailers like twoguyscigars.com and is distributed in the United States by Miami Cigar and Company. Jose Dominguez, Jose Dominguez, Jose, Jose, Jose Dominguez. What the hell are you doing? I'm writing a commercial for Jose Dominguez. Well, what you should be doing is talking about how good they are. That Jose Dominguez makes millions of cigars for other people, but saves the best tobaccos and the best blend for his namesake, Jose Dominguez. Not singing a song, if that's what you think you're doing. What I am doing is creating what is known as a donut. 
Hey, nobody's going to take away your donut. No, a donut in a commercial is when it starts with a jingle and then the information comes in and then ends with the song again. The information is the filling of the donut. Why does everything you talk about have to center around food and usually donuts? I don't know. Listen, Jose Dominguez cigars come in four great sizes and two wrappers. The mild, buttery, smooth, natural, and the slightly bolder Maduro. And every cigar is about $5. You know as well as I do, Dave, Jose Dominguez is no $5 cigar. It's worth so much more, it's a sensational value. Okay, here's the end of the donut. You ready? Jose Dominguez. Jose Dominguez. It's time to light that cigar and stay tuned. The Cigar Authority will be right back on the United Podcast Network. Raised in Cuba and steeped in the rich tradition of the Fernandez Cigar Legacy, A.J. Fernandez produces unparalleled premium cigars in Esteli, Nicaragua, ensuring superior quality. The day-to-day operations at Tabacalera A.J. Fernandez Cigars de Nicaragua are managed under the watchful eye of A.J. Fernandez himself. Through a fusion of inherited techniques and learned patience, A.J. Fernandez pillar tobaccos are grown from prized seeds which are proprietary only to the Fernandez family. Perhaps the most essential quality of the A.J. Fernandez line of cigars, such as New World, Enclave and Last Call, is the perspective and motivation of A.J. Fernandez, as well as the history of the Fernandez family. Enjoy the continuing legacy of A.J. Fernandez cigars. Hey, what's up, people? This is David Ortiz, Big Papi from the Big Papi Cigar. You're listening to Cigar Tori. And we are back, broadcasting live from the La Flor Dominicana Cigar Sound Set. We're here with Todd Cumes from the Oliva Cigar Company. Welcome back, everybody. We're talking about the Ten Commandments of, Ten Commandments of Cigars, how to act in a cigar shop. Does anybody in our audience want to chime in, have anything to say positively or negatively about what we said? Typically not. In the meantime, I'll let you know that Vic Anderson in the chat room is saying he's been a fan of Oliva for years. Thank you. He never smoked a Gilberto Oliva before. Great cigar, and it won't be his last. Perfect. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. That's the idea of the care package, mm-hmm. to hopefully, and, and thank you for partaking oh. in it. But well, this was great. We got a whole bunch of people smoking a cigar at the same time. Uh, some people listen to the show. Most people listen to the show later in the week. Sure. And they'll all have, hopefully, uh, tr- if they never tried it before, try it for the first time. How do you beat it, really? I mean, it, there's, there's the right cigar to right. show, show people. The, the price point is, yeah. is spot on, too. So it's really good. We're smoking the Four Kicks Maduro. Kicks. It's got a kick. It's oh the right name God, for it. Have a kick. It's mm-hmm. got a kick. It's, it's uh, building up for for you guys that like the stronger cigars. You're probably saying right up your alley. Both of these cigars are right in my wheelhouse. Yeah. Uh, I enjoy both of them immensely. So. I'm about two kicks into the four. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say so. I'm about three and a half. <laughs> Um, and I've had regular four kicks for many, many times, and not so much of a kick. This Maduro is a, is a couple of notches up from, yeah, it's from, up. from the natural, for sure. And this is um, E.P. Carrillo making this? Correct. Yeah, so uh, E.P. Carrillo makes the uh, natural and, the, and, and now the Maduro of it. Um, and don't let an outside wrapper fool you lots of times looking at this because um, uh, it's burning well and everything. Mm. It's just a natural way that this wrapper right. ends up looking. I know some people look like look at a perfect shine and a perfect flavor is what it comes down to. Of what, do you, what flavor do you get from this? Um, so um, that's what to look for. And Todd, on, on Facebook, uh, John messaged me, what, what is the difference between the Blanc and uh, the regular Reserver? Uh, other than the wrapper, like how would you compare them to each other? Well, the Connecticut obviously is going to be a little bit milder than the Sumatran. Um, you know, the, with the Connecticut or the Blanc Gilberto, on the cold draw, you get a real a lot of undertones of cedar, um, a lot of sweetness to it. And from that point, when you when you light it up, it'll just keep building on that all the way through. With this, to me, starts off a lot of uh, with a lot of organic tastes. The Sumatran. And builds up from there on that end too. So you go in a typical Connecticut, Ecuadorian Connecticut, and a Sumatran. There's, there's differences in taste, flavor, the way it burns, and, and you think and the ingredients inside though was the same? 
pretty similar. Yeah. Pretty similar. Okay. Yeah. And if you're a local brick and mortar, don't have them. We have both at two guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So uh, right now it's time for the Don Raphael offer of the day brought to you by Don Raphael Cigars. Everyone has a price. Would you do this? And if so, for how much? So Todd, this is how it works. I'm really not going to offer you this really pulling amount of money out because it's a lot of money this time. It's hundred thousand dollars. So you do a lot of things for hundred thousand. Probably else, not right? in. <laughs> How about swim in a sewer? No, it's going to take a little bit minute. more. It's One minute. One minute. A little bit more than that. Really? Yeah. Hang on a second. Yeah. Hang on a second. Are we talking about a sewer? Just the, the bad one. The drain pipe sewer that you know outside. You pull up a grate and jump in and go for a swim. Where the bad stuff goes when yeah. you flush. Where does it go? It goes into into that that hundred thousand dollars. There's always the risk of alligators. <laughs> not really? A, not, a not around here. <laughs> not up here. And this is where you'd want to do it, right? You wouldn't want to do it in New Orleans, probably. Oh, yeah. For a minute. The smell on Canal Street in New Orleans, it's brutal. Just like walk, walking in the sewer. Oh, my yeah. God. I can hold my breath for almost a minute. Yeah, no, you don't want to see So clothes. I think, yeah, it's, what would you get? 100000 I mean, I could shower after. I'd be in. I think I'm in. I think I would do it. So he would swim with poop, but he wouldn't eat a cupcake. No. <laughs> I don't have to ask Ed Sullivan. No, I'm no. out. But you'd get tuberculosis or something yeah, like that, no, right? Yeah. Ah, it's a little whatever. It's on your skin. It's so You're so weird that some of the things you would <laughs> you would consider doing and some of the things you don't, you would never do. It's not internal. You know, you didn't say $100,000 to eat a spoonful of it. it. Swim for doesn't one minute. Matter. If you swim, if you swim for if, a minute. If, if you stop for 30 seconds, you lose. If you end up doing a whole minute, you get 100000 I could swim for a minute. You think so? You could pull that off. Yeah, you didn't say I had to go. I had to dunk. You know, just swim. swim. Doggy paddle. Yeah, that's okay. Just keep your head splash. above There's water. Be some splashing going Hold on. Hold your yeah. breath for most of it. Breathe through your mouth. Hope nothing splashes in. I'm in. Well, is, is, is there a right suit, the like a Tyvek suit? No, no, no just yeah, you in your swim right. trunk. Yeah. Hang on a second. I got to go naked? No, no, no swim, swim trunks. trunks is okay. Oh, that's fine. I have a full body swim trunk. There's enough <laughs> trunk in the water. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you do that. You're, you're a crazy Barry? Man, Mr. John. No. No way. Yeah. Just you. Cupcake? No. 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 <laughs> I'm not putting that in my body. Exactly. In my body. So four kicks Maduro. What are you thinking? Full bodied, notes of chocolate. So now it's full bodied. So I'm eating tomorrow. Mm-hmm. It's full bodied. Yeah, it's like a, an eat. So and it's creeping up. Yeah. And we're not even halfway there, I don't think. You guys are a little further than me. but This, this, is, a, this is a nice after dinner cigar. I think you need to have a hearty meal. Yeah, something. You need some food and you Mm -hmm. enjoy this. Yeah. Just for the record, I haven't eaten since 6 o'clock yesterday. Intermittent fasting. He's still doing that. Food has nothing to do with it. I still stand on that. I'm not sick to my stomach over it. You're getting getting thin now. Now you're getting thin. (laughs) Yeah, I am. So he's sitting in. Look at who he's sitting in between. I'm going to try to drop down to uh, 182. I'm walking around at 185 right now. I think 182 is perfect. Three more, and then what do you do after that? Then I just go into maintenance mode, and my eating window goes out to probably about 10 hours, and I'll be all set. You got other people to do this too. You, you're actually pulling this off to uh, other people. I'm just shocked that you're doing it. You do it sometimes. I have tried it. Uh, it's not as bad as I would think it would be. It's not Especially bad at all. if after you get a couple of days in and stuff. Oh man, but, do you get grumpy? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'd like to update everybody on the salad discussion from last week. Uh, Dave left the show disgusted, knowing that he was going to have salad on Monday. Thought about it all day Sunday. Bothered came in, did not talk to me Monday morning yeah. until lunchtime, and I pull up the salad, and I had a nice little steak off to the side on it, and. Uh, he was like, now we're talking. And I was so happy. But he was I'm grinning from ear to ear. Pissed. Pissed that he had salad to look forward to for Monday. You just, for lunch. You just ruined the weekend. <laughs> it was worth it. And I didn't have to do all that front end loading earlier before I got here. All that work. Hey, Jonathan, what's on the menu for Monday? Uh, Monday. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking meatballs. I'm thinking meatball Monday. All right. Dave will come in happy. I like a meatball. Yeah. And you, for a Frenchman, you make a good meatball. I make a good meatball. Shocked, but it's true. All right, so we're going to do um, 
He has a lot of experience with bowls. <laughs> yes, he does. We're going to do the Classic 3-Way, brought to you by Classic Cigars. You've heard of Epic Rap Battles. But now it's time for the Epic Battle. Wow. It's kind of intimidating to be in the presence of so many great athletes. For this day. Right, tell anyone about this, I'll f***ing kill you. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. In Classic History. Here's looking at you, kid. Brought to you by Classic Cigar. Nervous? Yes. All Classic Cigars are handmade and imported from the Dominican Republic, and every cigar is priced under, get this, under $3 per cigar. You like that, baby? Let him know where I came from, yeah! Choose any blend, including the Classic Connecticut for its mild and smooth taste, the Classic Maduro for its bold and spicy flavor, or the Classic Cuban for its sweet, sun-grown, and nutty overtones. That's Undertones, you idiot! Whichever classic you choose, it's a classic cigar. Available at twoguyscigars.com. That's twoguyscigars.com. Celebrate today with a classic cigar. All right, Todd, you're new to the podcast, Mm -hmm. so I want to tell you how this game plays because we're going to put you in here. Okay. I'm going to name somebody and maybe their birthday or maybe when something happened or whatever it is, and you're going to guess what year that 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 happened in. Okay. Without going over. Okay. So if it was 1980 and I went to 19 and it was 1981, you would be good. Right. If you said 82, 82 you would be, you'd be okay. over. Uh, closest without going over, I have six, and I don't have a, any uh, backups or anything. So it's just stop at five, and then the you sixth do one is the tiebreaker. <laughs> you, do you don't have to write tiebreaker <laughs> on the paper. <laughs> yes, you do. You have to. So. Our champion is Mr. Jonathan still? No. I thought it was Ed Sullivan. I think it's Ed Sullivan right so, now. So I'm giving it to Todd so he goes first. Yeah? Oh, All yeah. Right. Thank you. All right. Ed Sullivan, if I win this, I'm stripping you of your title. Okay. So Todd. Yes. Thomas Edison. Oh, boy. Patented the electrical incandescent lamp today. What year? January 27th. It was Thomas Edison. He patents the electrical incandescent lamp. What year was that? Oof. Well, I'm going to go with 1910. 1910, he says. Barry? 1880. 1880. 1880. 1879. 1779. That's like a dollar bit, isn't it? Believe it or not. By the way, if somebody gets it exact, they get two points for getting okay. it exact. Somebody did. Barry Stein. You son of a... <laughs> 1880. Wow. Now, you went first, so I didn't enforce this rule, but you've got to write down your answer now as oh, your okay. guess because Barry's going to go and we try not to play the man or play the guess. Okay. Okay, so Barry, yes, this sir. is over to you. Former world boxing champion Mike Tyson went on trial for allegedly raping an 18-year-old contestant in the Miss Black America contest. Today, what year? 1992. 1992. That's where I was going. Um, you can do whatever you want to do, but it's not your turn yet. It's Mr. Jonathan. 1984. 1984. You can certainly say... I'm going to go 88 because I think that's a nice little comfortable spot. 1988. Somebody has two points. I tried to save you. Barry Stein. Know, two points. 1992. Did you do homework this week? No, week? I did not, but you my business leave partner your... in New York worked for Mike Tyson, and I remember yeah. when it happened. We have four points for Barry Stein. This is unprecedented. Is your laptop cover? All right, I'm just making sure. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jonathan, over to you. Wire Recording Corporation of America announced the first magnetic tape recording. The Wireway machine was built built in with a built-in oscillator and sold for $149.50 today. What year? The four, the first um, magnetic tape, basically the tape machine. 1959. 1959. Todd. Uh, I'm gonna go a little earlier than that. I'm gonna go probably in the 1949, 1950. So you gotta pick 49. <laughs> 49. I'll go 49. <laughs> I wrote down 1836. 1836. Believe it or not, we'll take it. 1836. That's 1948. You said 49. Uh, you said 49 at 50, but 48. Should have went the other way. Should have went the other way. Barry gets a point, but Ed Sullivan, were you on, on any of these? No. All right, good. Back to you, Todd. Mm-hmm. Steve Job, 
Jobs unveils the Apple iPad today. What year? The Apple iPad. I'm gonna go 05. 2005. 1999. 1999. 2003 for two points, sucker. 2003. Todd gets the point. It says 2005. It was 2010. I almost said 2010. That's it. It's only eight years old. That's it. Seems. That's it. Todd gets the point, and we're over to Barry. Yes. This is a, a, a setup for you, Wayne Gretzky. Set a National Hockey League NHL record for consecutive game scoring. He ended the streak at 51. Today, it ended. What year? 1987. 87. 1990. 90. I'm going 88. 88, and everybody is over. It was 84. Oh, 84. That's the year I thought they for sure it was going to be a uh, cupcake question. And the only reason why we do this is because Mr. Jonathan has no points, and may God have mercy on his soul, but his one shot... Left for it. Who's this go to? You? I think it does, yeah. It all rests on this question. For 10 points. <laughs> I'll give you extra points if you get it exact. I'll tell you that. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, considered by most experts to have been a child prodigy and a musical genius. He defined classical music era with over 600 works. His classical opera, including The Magic Flute, and the marriage of Figueroa, Rockne Amadeus, is born today. I've been told many times I have a magical flute. You have. 1684. 1684. Mozart. Uh, 1710. 1710. See, I thought it was the 18th century, 1827. That would be the 17th century. 17th century. But 1810? <laughs> I said 1827. 1827. Uh, 1710, we'll take it. It's 1756. That's another one for Todd. Two for Todd. Five for Barry. Goose egg for Mr. Jonathan. And our champion is Barry now. Does that mean Barry is our champion, Ed yes. Sullivan? Yeah, absolutely. All right. And a runaway. All right. That's Cheated. <laughs> so that's how that works. Um, okay. Back to uh, this four kicks. Full bodied. Four kicks. Cigar. I'm okay with it. I'm surprised. I'm not tapping out. It's right on the. It's right on the edge for me. I'd say eight is the magic number of the cigar in strength. Eight. The halfway point. It's a little bit more earthy than sweet. Um, those chocolate components to me have left the building. Um, maybe they'll return, uh, but it's definitely becoming more earthier cigar. Yeah. I would like to read a, uh, a mailbag here because uh, Patrick has some feedback about the classic three-way. Ah, I'd uh, love to hear it. The following message was submitted through the Contact Us page of thecigarauthority.com. And Patrick writes, Hi, guys. I came up with a few more ideas for the show, so I thought I'd run them by you. Number one, get a stopwatch and see how long it takes Dave and Barry to poop on any idea that isn't theirs. It's one show idea. Uh, number two. <laughs> really? Get, who is this? Patrick Van Hoos. His name is Patrick. That's oh. all I'm going to say. Uh, get Dave an really? abacus so that during the classic three-way, it'll help him figure out who is the closest without going over. It would be faster. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Patrick. Start you're not making any friends with me. I'll tell you that. Start a hotline so listeners can call in with their name and where they're from so you could use that every now and then for the in and out show bumpers. And uh, could we do something where when somebody writes in an email to us that they actually give us the audio? They can record it. It's really easy right now with your iPhone or your Android. Just uh, text to speech. I mean, uh, yeah, speech to uh, you record an audio file is what I'm saying. Okay, and then you send it because especially next week's show when everybody's saying I want to smoke cigars, let me do this, let me do that. Oh, We're, if we could have the, the bitching, whole, that'd yeah, be great. A <laughs> compilation of everybody bitching and complaining as opposed to and, and what happens is we don't read everybody's email, but if there's a whole bunch of people uh, writing on the same thing, you pick one that's yep. written better or whatever, whichever one you choose, we end up going with that because a lot of the things, or in a case like this, where somebody's calling me out on it, it brings Jonathan joy. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, start an annual Cigar Olympics where you three guests and employees compete in ash ball, ash hole, and uh, maybe darts. 
I don't know what the darts have to do with cigars, but uh, in a few other non-athletic <laughs> sports games, commentary might not work, but a recap show could work. Uh, and then depending on how long it takes for these to get shot down, I might have a few more. Keep up the great show. John, Terrible John, idea. Yeah, because we haven't uh, thought of it, so it's actually – now, here's how it really works. If it's, a, if it, it's a horrible idea because you came up with it, but if I think about it later on and I come up with the same exact idea, it actually becomes good, so – isn't that how it works most That's of the time? That's how it works in my life. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> how it worked at the anniversary party. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah, Dave, I'm in for the darts. Are you a good dart player? We used to play in the league. So. Ah, the ringer. I struck you. Strike me more. Of we a, used to have a uh, bowling team. You know, big ball Way bowling. Back, I used to be on a bowling, bowling team back then. Two guys had a had a bowling was in a bowling league, and. We were terrible. So the first year, it comes out that this becomes your spread or whatever. So you get extra points or something. They figure you out. Well, as we played each and every week, we got better and better. And then the next year, we won the championship, and we quit. Oh, nice. Go out on top? That's it. Have you ever bowled a 300 game? No. Once. We we play little balls. We play candle Uh, pin. It's a little ball with a candle pin. You bowled a 300? Once at Rainbow Lanes in in, uh, Brooklyn, New York on Knapp Street. It was actually owned by uh, Mark Roth, the bowler. And one time I bowled a 300 game. Did you ever play candle pins? No. You think I speak never at all? Everybody in the studio it's, audience. It's a fun game. It is fun. I want to try it. Maybe we get a little bowling, at least a bowling night together. We all go bowling. Find one that'll let us I got to deal with you all day long and then go out with you after hours and bowl and listen to how I'm bowling wrong. <laughs> I'm in. You'll be on the other team. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for telling us that Mark Roth was a bowler because I think I speak for everyone in the studio audience and saying no one's ever heard of him. So is this it for this guy talking smack about him? That was it. Yeah, he was just the abacus thing I thought was cute. (laughs) All right, let's save it and let's incorporate some of those things in and it's not a bad idea. Wow, Patrick, you must be falling over. I can't wait to hear the uh, suggestions (laughs) for this week. (laughs) He didn't hate them. Uh, Another one uh, about uh, a recent show also submitted through the Contact Us page. Uh, just finished your blind taste episode and just wanted to say I really enjoyed it. To someone who is new to cigars and the show, it was both entertaining while giving insight on how you guys approach cigars you were not familiar with, as I am not familiar with much at this point. Funny thing about it was I was enjoying a Romeo and Julieta bully during the show. Wow. I would never have guessed you guys were smoking the same. Uh, I enjoyed mine regardless and hope my palate will continue to develop. And that's Brett writing in. There we go. Romeo and Juliet Bully was up against what? what were we, I forget what Long that was. Yeah. It was two weeks oh, before yeah. we, two weeks prior that we put them together. I know. I remember last week. I even forgot the one I put together <laughs> until we started get, getting going and, start, and trying to taste so, it. So, Todd, and uh, Oliva Cigars, what you go to, Oliva? I I really love Corona size cigars and petite Coronas. Um, for me, if it's later on in the day and I'm looking for something a little full, I'll go after the V number four. Uh, I think it's fantastic, mm-hmm. the size, the flavor from start to finish. The value of that the cigar. value is fantastic. I'm so much the opposite of you guys that I, if I'm going to smoke a stronger cigar, it's always early in the day for me. And then my cigars get milder as I go on. Mm-hmm. I cannot ramp up. Go so from you, mild the only way to, go. to medium yeah, we, to full. Can you full. imagine doing this backwards or what we just did I would have liked it better. Really? Yeah, rip this off like no, a band No, I'm afraid I'm not, not gonna gonna ta- I'm not going to taste the subtleness of the, of the milder milder. cigar because I'm – you, you make Jonathan five thousand dollar buys at a trade show, and you're on your thirtieth cigar. Right. You can taste it; it's yeah. not a problem. Jonathan, there's no right or wrong, but you're doing it wrong. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ed Sullivan. You're welcome. Another one of my favorites is the Milano Number Four. Same reason. Yeah. Same same type of cigar, same size. And that's the one. Hot, what's the hottest one to get? The V Double Toro. Okay. That six by sixty, because um, it takes the largest leaf. Of a of a wrapper that's very hard to come by to begin with, right? And then you're talking you're talking the biggest leaf of something that's rare, that's you know perfect. Yeah. You know the veins are right. There's no spots on it. So that that's what makes that cigar so um, rare. So now owned by Jay Cortez, will we start seeing some Jay Cortez cigars rolling? In, rolling Not that out? I've heard of. Um, really? Yeah, I think it's going to be 
If anything, it'll be in the future, a year or two down the road. Those that don't know, Jay Cortez, big, big, millions and millions mm-hmm. of cigars that they make um, mostly for the European That's market. Right. You have the Neos and, and the, the small little cigars that are out there. Right, right, right. But as, as I told you during the break, back in the early 90s, we used to carry Jay Cortez in a blue tube. Very, very value cigar that that was beautiful looking. It mm-hmm. looked like it was a high end cigar, and it ended up being a low price in a tube. And we did very well with it. And then the next thing you know, it was out of the market. At the very, very beginning of the cigar boom is when they exited. Right from it was the weirdest thing. And I'm like, wow, why did they end up doing this? But they did, and here they are. It's a couple of years now, anyway. Uh, no, last last summer. Okay, last, last summer. summer yeah. Oh, yeah, right. it happened just before the trade show. Yeah, okay. right, like a month or so before the trade right. show. Yeah. So I think we'll start seeing it. Um, and any secrets from your trade show thing? No. no. I know we're just drinking coffee here, but. Yeah, no, they're, they're pretty tight-lipped on what, you know, as far as what uh, we have coming out forward and going forward, so. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining I us. I appreciate it. Yeah, you hey, broke your cherry for the show. show. So nice show. all you other podcasters, he's available out there. That's he's right. a veteran now. Uh, he is a veteran. He's got 20 years in there. He knows a lot about cigars. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much for us. Uh, that's it for us. Uh, next week, what's in your humidor? Uh, what is in your humidor that you just will not smoke? Barry has none of it, so we're going to add to that <laughs> and say what do you wish you had in your humidor. Uh <clears throat> Um, if you have something yourself on you want to chime in, uh, go to the Contact Us page of the Cigar Authority. I don't think you can put an attachment to the file there. But if you wanted to send an attachment, an audio file, you could send it to Mr. J at the Cigar Yeah, you don't think and you I'll could do it on the, audio on the commenting? We would have to write back and say, go ahead and send it. All right, yeah, that, yeah. that'll work then. Yep, so send a like contact, say, hey, I got an audio file. We'll respond. We'll we, say, we should send put, it to us. Can we put something up so people can do it? Because that would end up being every week having their voices. I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say no, but I think that that uh, that is going to be some heavy lifting. But it's something that we can look into. Okay. It would also open up to uh, people sending malicious viruses or. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. So it would oh, be no. better off to write to them and say, "Go ahead and send it." Well, right. that also uh, assures us that we're going to get a real person because some people don't put their real emails, and those emails. Don't get read because if I can't respond to the email, I'm not reading it. All right. So uh, do you have a cigar uh, missing that you wish you had? We'll talk about that. Uh, Cigars on your bucket list next week. Uh, We'll talk about that and lots more. Until then, you've been listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And it's quite possible that you've learned nothing in the last two hours. But always remember to keep the lid end out of your mouth. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.